owns and operates Sankey Six N Ranch along with his wife Cherie, which is a multi-breed family operation in the Kansas Flint Hills at Cancel Grove, Kansas. They raise registered Angus and registered Brangus cattle and have been in operation since 1978 and in Council Grove since 1982. Their focus is on functional, useful cattle that meet the needs of the industry with a real focus on phenotype. They have raised and shown multiple show bull and show heifers of the year in both of their breeds. Chris has judged multiple county, state, national shows of all breeds in the U.S. and Mexico. He's judged in Denver, Louisville, Fort Worth, Houston, the American Royal, and in most states. Chris has judged junior nationals for Angus, Brangus, Brahmin, Shorthorn, Kemaine, and Red Angus. Thank you, Mr. Sankey, for being here with us today. Good morning and certainly a privilege to be back with you here for our uh, final day of judging here and uh, on the American heifers and a really nice way to start here in our Brangus show. I think a lot of good heifers up and down the line. Uh, it's some variation, you know, when you go from April to June, uh, you know, obviously there's going to be some size variance and uh, depending on where you want to sit on a few things, I think you could probably do some different things. But this heifer that leads off the class for me, I really like her balance and her symmetry to her line. Uh, she's one that's still very sound and athletic when you ask her to get out and go. She's a June heifer calf, uh, obviously has performed pretty well at this stage of the game, uh, uh, one that you certainly, uh, but to me, I like her the best because of her balance, her stability as you take her to the ground, a little better in her heart uh, and her fore rib shape than our heifer that comes in second. To me, just a little more doability in the center part of her body. I like the extension of the next heifer. She's one that's really got a good look to her, sets her neck up good out of the top of her shoulder and really extended from the profile. Probably a little more daylight underneath her as you study her just in terms of depth of body in relation to her frame. She's just a little more tubular in her rib design, but I like her kind really well. She's good in her top line, has some strength and stability off both ends of her framework. The next effort is a little softer in the center part of her body. I like the doability that she has. She too has got a stable hind leg. She wants to set out just a little more at the base of her shoulder. I didn't read her being quite as extended from the side as our heifer that ends up beating her there in the second spot, but that's another useful kind of a female with some quality to her. This heifer's more like the second place heifer from the side. I like her extension. I like her femininity. I like her refinement up front. She runs out of feature and bone and substance in relation to our top trio of cattle. She gets a little tighter in the way she's made the center part of her body and just a little more fragile at the ground. But I like the look, like the extension. She's very ladylike. If she masses up and bodies up, that's going to be a very, very good heifer. 
This one does have more body, more springer rib, more depth rib and flesh all the way through. She gets a little coarser up and through her shoulder. When you set the cattle in motion, she wants to get just a little tangled there off of her rear leg. But I like that heifer's body and her mass and her substance. Just got to move a shot better for me off either end of her framework. We close with three good cattle. They maybe don't have the extras from a balance perspective. They give up a little bit of horsepower, but they're still moderate, sensibly sized cattle that have some depth of body to them, make functional brood cows, just maybe don't have some of the extra bells and whistles of some cattle on up the line. Good way to start off our show. Thank you very much, Dr. Bloomberg. That was class one in our Brangus show, led by Gretchen Merton from Washington County 4-H, followed by Aubrey Meter, Wiley Abilene FFA, then Dawson Moran from Washington County 4-H, Nash Smith from Sweeney FFA, in fifth, Casey Shiflett, Navarro County 4-H, Mackenzie Seasongood from Wilson County 4-H, Rope Jackson, Belleville FFA, and then eighth, Andrew Miller from Canyon Lake FFA. Just the pair of heifers here in class two and a little bit of difference in terms of feature and substance and that's what gives the heifer, it leads off the class the advantage. There's just more of this female as you study her all the way through. Uh, one that's really extended from the side. You like her heaviness of structure, a big footed stout feature kind of a female that's just got quite a bit more uh, substance to her than our heifer that comes in second. Could probably tweak her a little bit off of her rear skeleton, just loosen her up a bit. But I think she needs to win this class because of the extras that she brings forth. The heifer that comes next, a little more refined in her shoulder design, a little sleeker uh, maybe just in terms of refinement up through her front end. She just runs out of substance and dimension in relation to our class winner. Got a nice look about her. She patterns up well, just uh, not quite enough uh, weight per day of age and uh, dimension to get around our heifer that leads off the class. First call, Rangus, class seven. Well, good morning. It's uh, another nice morning in Austin. Great way to start over on the beef master side with a really nice set of these calves. We have some age variation. We're running from April's down into, actually, I think we have a September in here, so we've got quite a bit of age variation, but tremendous amount of quality, I think, up through this class all the way through. And Heifer, we're going to start with, I think, the one that kind of just... From the standpoint of the things that I like to see in this these cattle, I think she puts the most good things together. She's good at the ground. She's really good in her top line. She's got enough rib to her. She's attractive enough made when we look at her, the way she ties into that shoulder and, and kind of up through her front end structure. She just kind of, I think there's, you know, there's going to be heavier made there's going to be some more probably a little bulkier made cattle as we work our way down through the line but i think from a female that's got a lot of future i think our class winner puts the most good things together and heifer that follows in seconds a lot like a really long neck, long spine. She maybe wants to roll those pins down, not be quite as good on the move as our class winner, but I think you really have to appreciate that she's a big bodied, high performing female, good at the ground, good place to start. This black heifer that comes in third, I think this is one of the really, really good prospects. She's young. 
She's probably not quite as far along as what we have standing above us, but this is a heifer calf that when you start backing up and look at potential for what we have down the road, I think this is a female that's got probably as much potential as any we have in here. She's, she's sound, she's functional, she's attractive made. We just give her some time and allow her to catch up with those bigger cattle that are ahead of her. Really long spine, kind of a nice made female that comes next. Her advantage when we compare to some of these heifers that stand below her is that she's just, I love the, you know, she's kind of clean in that underlying structure. She's attractive up in her front end. She's maybe not as wide based as maybe some of the other we have below us, but she's got more than enough, very adequate, just a good, useful, good doing female. I love this rib shape and bulk and body in this red heifer that comes next. What I'd like to change about her, as soon as we get her on the move, she's going to drop her pins. She's going to not really give us that good square look to us that we'd like to see. Standing still, and I'll give this young man credit. He does an awesome job of getting this one shown. He'll get everything there is there out of her. And just a really good female, I think, that you know is attractive to look at standing still, just like to change her a little bit on the move. Then we get into a set of these big, powerful females. I mean, these are big bone, big footed, high performing growth cattle that I appreciate. From that standpoint, what I'd like to change about them is we start looking at shoulder structure, we look at them down at the ground, we look at maybe front end structure, and just if we could change them a little bit, clean them up a little bit, just take a little of that front end out of them, it'll balance them up some, give them a little bit more rib shape and dimension to go with that. As we work our way down through here, we get to this young lady's red heifer. Heifer, when we compare to the ones that stand above her, she's starting to get a little tighter made right in through the center portion of her body. Gonna have to soften her up a little bit, make her a little soggier. This black heifer this young lady has have, I think, again, is one that's kind of interesting as we go down the road with her. Today, we're going to have to get a little more of her to get her further up just as we work our way down these next four head. These are cattle that are good doing, useful, good cattle. As we compare them to the ones that stand at the front end, we just need more of them. Need a little more rib shape, a little more dimension, and a little more power. A good set of cattle, good set of exhibitors. Congratulations. Another good trio over here on our Brangus side, and then maybe a little more variation in this class amongst these three, but uh, the heifer that wins the class, I think, is the nicest balanced heifer we got in the group. Uh, she's the most uniform as you study her in both her top and her bottom line, and then with that, she's very agile as you have to get out and travel. I like the construction of her shoulder angle, the way she sits down to the ground. She's very comfortable on the go, and I think she props up with the most eye appeal as you study her from the profile. The heifer that comes next, another big-bodied, easy-keeping kind of a female. I like her rear depth and her softness of her flank. She doesn't maybe have quite as much extension up through her front end as our heifer that leads off the class. She gets just a little straighter in the angle of her shoulder, but another useful kind of a female. Just a very productive heifer to come out of here. And third, a, a little stouter featured, a little bulkier made even than the, the heifers that go ahead of her. Doesn't hook up with quite as much balance uh, from the side. A little plainer in her appearance, but I like this heifer's bone. I like her substance. I like her dimension, all those things. Uh, be very favorable of. Just need to hook her up uh, with a little more eye appeal in relation to the top two. But a good trio of heifers here in this class. Second go. Thank you much, gentlemen. You just heard class three in our Brangus show, led by Kara McKee from Russ County 4-H, followed by Kinsley Rose, San Jacinto County 4-H, and then Ava Noriega from Fayette County 4-H. Class two in our Brangus show was led by Bram Christensen from Brazoria County 4-H, followed by Holly Seasongood, Wilson County 4-H. Over in our Beefmaster show, class one sorted out with Sarah Wells on top from Grapevine FFA, followed by Wade Gardner, Troop FFA. In third, Bridger Etheridge, Nacogdoches County 4-H, then Wes Shaw from Wheeler County 4-H. In fifth, Logan Mazak from Columbus FFA, Peyton Garrett, Coleman County 4-H. Then Aubrey Johnson, Crawford FFA. Caitlin Bradford from Carmine FFA. And ninth, Emma McAngus from Erath County 4-H. 
and Caden Lee from Millsap FFA. Well, we've got some sorting to do. I'd like to take this time to thank our Rodeo Austin Heifer Committee volunteers and the students and professors from Sam Houston State University. 11 students and four professors, along with our Rodeo Heifer Committee, have volunteered their time to our exhibitors, helping unload yesterday and are currently running the ring today. So if you see any of those folks from Sam Houston or your Heifer Committee, please feel free to give them a big thank you. Another nice class over on the side of the ring with a good set of these March heifer calves. I think the female that wins the class probably comes as close to putting together the most good things for me. She's sure attractive enough made. She's good enough on her top. She's, you know, that we've got a couple down the road that maybe they're a little soggier made than this female, but she's got more than enough rib shape and flank and very adequate I think when we step back and look at her as a kind of a young cow prospect I think there's a lot of good here I love that underline I like the way she comes up out of her neck and up out of her shoulder I like the way she's put together at the ground just a good place to start and then I think there's probably some places we're giving and taking a little bit as we work our way through the rib shape the dimension that this red effort brings to the ring is her advantage I think in this class that gets her up into the second end of this spot the uh, you know, I, again, we get them on the move and to change her. She wants to drop those pins and not really be, give us that square look that we'd like to see out of them, but still it's a female that rib shape, volume, mass, and body is just going to work her way to the top. Followed in by a red effort that's a lot similar, a lot like her, really similar in kind. Young lady's doing a nice job getting this one put together and brought out here and appreciated about her. She's got some extension of has some length of top. She's a female that's just kind of adequate all the way through. Not a probably not overpowering anywhere, but sure good enough. And I think uh, belongs up on this fin. Nice black heifer that this young man has next. You know, she is at, she's probably as big ribbed as any we have in here. She gets a little loose underneath. Probably a little more skin out, underline than I'd like to see in her. But I still have to appreciate the fact the rib shape, the dimension that she has, is what her advantage over this red heifer that follows out. Length of neck, length of top, length of spine. Uh, this female, this red heifer is tremendous. She's long neck, long top. Lots of things about her you like. We're just going to have to deepen her down, give her a chance to fill up, make her a little soggier if we're going to get her up on the front end. So congratulations on a good class. <clears throat> Another nice class of these uh, Brangus females here. Really a loose made, uh, uh, really a well-built heifer here that wins this class. I like her foot size. I like her heaviness of structure. She's got an advantage in the way that she flexes and motors off both ends uh, in relation to our heifer that comes in second. A really moderately framed kind of a female with a lot of rib and a lot of mass to her. And again, I think her movement is what dictates her to the front of this class. A little more extension and probably uh, maybe just a little more uh, look than, than the heifer that comes in second. With that, though, she's one that gets a little straighter in the angle of her shoulder, a little tighter in the way she drives off of her rear leg. I like this heifer's performance, though. She's one that's got some quality about her. I just like to loosen her up a bit in relation to the heifer that gets the blue ribbon. A really nice made heifer to come in third as well as tidy up through her front end. Has some length to her top and some levelness out of her hip. Take her to the ground. She's a little more fragile in her foot size, a little more refined in her bone work. Doesn't have quite the body shape we find in the two heifers that beat her in the class. 
class. The next heifer is one that is a little bulkier made, a little huskier, middle kind of a female. She gets a little straighter in the edge of her shoulder. I didn't read her being quite as flexible off either end of her framework either, but one that you have to like in terms of her body type and her density and her stoutness. Heifer that comes next to the end, one that's real cowy, uh, kind of wants to run the wrong way from her chest up into her flank, a little plainer and deeper down there to the base of her neck. Need to clean that up a bit and just give her a little more high appeal. The next heifer probably is a bit fresher uh, from a composition perspective. She falls out of balance, so when we set the cattle in motion, and when she stands, wants to get a little rounder out of her hip and tucks her rear leg up underneath of herself. Make a good cow, though. She's flexible, got some body, just maybe not quite as eye appealing as some of our other females on up the line. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That was class four in our bringing show, led by Gracie Johnson from Austin County 4-H, followed by Avery Rogney from Royal FFA, then Nash Smith, Sweeney FFA, in fourth, Wade King from Wilson County 4-H, Rodney Rhodes from San Jacinto County 4-H, then Kaitlin Leggett from Foster FFA. In our Beefmaster show, class two sorted out with Kirsten Santamaro from Sweeney FFA on top. Then you have Elena Alvers from Brazoswood FFA, followed by Mackenzie Pierce, Electra FFA, Isaiah Brazina from Edna FFA, then Keston Lusty from San Saba County 4-H. While we've got some time here, I'd like to thank our 2023 Rodeo Austin sponsors. These sponsors help make Rodeo Austin poss possible, and they include TELUS Equipment Solutions. They include the official truck of Rodeo Austin, Ram. You should sign up for your chance to win a voucher for a Ram truck at any of the Ram booths across the fairgrounds. We also have HEB to thank, the official grocer of Ro Rodeo Austin. I'd like to thank also the Ralston Family Charitable Foundation, Frost Bank, and Holcat slash Texas First Rentals.
Really a nice lineup here in our first division, our calf champion in the Brangus show. I think uh, four really good classes, and we didn't have a lot of numbers in a couple of those classes, but I think the quality has been very, very deep. And the heifer that wins the first class, really like her body design. I like her femininity. I like her attractiveness. And with that, really uniform as you study her all the way through and we set the cattle in motion. She's one of the two that I think really gets out and covers her track well in terms of her angle to her shoulder and the build and give to her hind leg. The heifer that comes out of class two is a big, stout, robust female. I really like her heaviness of structure, her stoutness of feature. Probably maybe in relation to her frame, you might want to soften her up just a little bit. Um, you know, and you know, where you're at on her from a mature frame size perspective, I think it's up to you. I don't mind big ones, but she is on the upper end uh, in terms of size. But that's a heifer that's got some feature, has some density of bone and some power to her. Good heifer out of class three that I thought won the class because she was the most functional, uh, good body female, you know, maybe not a, some of the extras of some of the other cattle out here, but just really a good kind. Then a real loose made, big footed heifer out of class four. I really like the softness that she has in her rear rib and her flank and a heifer that still moves with some comfort. Maybe not as extended, uh, but I think that female is very good in terms of her type and kind. So, good seconds as well. It's a good division. Got a nice crowd this morning. Let's give them a good round of applause here. They got up a lot earlier than Chris and I did, so it's a good set of these uh, Brangus females. Over on our Beefmaster side, really a good set of these cattle up on the front end. And there is, you know, probably a little more give and take here between our first two cattle than our, you know, I'd like to combine these two efforts, put them together, and I think we'd have one that'd just be really powerful and hard to stop. Female that's going to win the class, the advantage she's going to show us today is that extra bit of rib, bulk, body, power that she brings to us. She probably would have, just be strictly honest with you, I step off and look at her, probably could get a little looser made than I'd like for her up in that front end underneath and that underline, but she's got a real honest cow look to her that I think you just can't you just can't take away from her and that's her advantage I think when we compare to the dark red heifer that comes next I love the profile love the phenotype on this heifer that stands second when we look at them and compare them to our class winner just center portion of their body we'll just give her time to soften up give her a little bit more flank and body in her but this is a really good one I think it's got a lot of future just the way she's built up in that front end she's so much better up in her neck structure and just really good lots of length lots of dimension in her we're just going to soften her up a little bit which is the advantage i think this red effort that comes next she is got a little more rib in her got a little more body in her she's super clean underlined really neat up in her neck but the way she's built, she gets a little more refined when we compare her to the two efforts that stand above her. Not quite as much bone, not quite as much foot, not quite as much female there as what we see standing on the front end. But then I have to appreciate her. She's a breeding piece that I think you can sure use in this industry and work your way up from there. A couple of these heifers next through, these two young men's heifers, and even down this next one, the speckled heifer, they're big bone, kind of rugged made, powered up females, got some real uh, dimension to them. They're good at the ground you know when we balance them out and compare them to the efforts of standing at the top end of the class we're just going to have to just uh, clean them up a little bit get a little bit more female there and just make a little more have a little more dimension from one end to the other as we follow down this young lady's yellow heifer just gets a little bit out of balance a little deeper up in that front end doesn't want to balance up so well she doesn't want to extend that i'd like to see her she carries back with lots of rib lots of bone and substance just not doesn't want to give us that look and as we follow out of these two guys a couple of nice heifer calves that we give them some chance give them time let them kind of get them pulled together and I think we can see them come down the road as a lot better, do a better job. Congratulations to these guys. A good class, good set of females. Thank you, gentlemen. Some results from our Brangus Heifer Show. Your champion heifer calf comes from class one, exhibited by Gretchen Merton in Washington County 4-H. Your reserve champion heifer calf comes from class four, exhibited by Gracie Johnson from San Jacinto County 4-H.
or in our Beefmaster show, Class 3, presented by Ellie Grissett from Buffalo FFA, followed by Sarah Wells, Grapevine FFA, then Abby Burkhart, Spring Branch FFA, followed by Fisher Hubbard, Friendswood FFA, then Colton Classell from LaGrange FFA, Landon Flissowski from Washington County 4-H, then seventh, Hope Strasser from Grand Oaks FFA, then Miguel Muro from Spring Branch FFA, and then Isaac Brezina from Jackson County 4-H. Attention in the barn, please refrain from keep taking your heifers over to the east side of the barn. Please do not bring your heifers to the drive of champion side of the barn over by the east.
Another very nice class of uh, Brangus females. A little bigger class here as we get into this next uh, division. Very nice effort to lead off the class, though. Very extended as you study her from the profile. I like the way it sets her neck up there at the top of her shoulder, and yet looks like a brood cow in the center part of her body. Very correct on her feet and legs. Got a stable, good hind leg, and then a big foot underneath of her. I think a very useful kind of a female here to lead off the class. Heifer in second gets there on structure. I really like the way this heifer motors. Young man does a very good job getting this heifer presented as well. Got a good look to her from the side. Uh, she's a heifer, though, that may be not quite as extended, not quite as flashy as our heifer that wins, but she's got some stability in her top line, some levelness out of her hip, and again, to me, correct enough at the ground, and that's what elevates her to the second spot. Third heifer is a little more moderate, deeper body, big ribbed in this, big rib cage in this heifer. Gets a little heavier in her front end, a little plainer uh, in terms of the base of her neck. This heifer, though, has got some doability. I think that'll melt right off of the first lactation. I like the cowiness this heifer has. Just doesn't have quite the look and pizzazz of the two heifers that beat her in the class. Here's a real bulky made heifer to come in fourth as well. I like the depth of body, the spring of rib and the volume she's got. Need to peel just some of the condition off of her up and through her front end. Make her a little more ladylike at the top of her neck and just make her a bit more feminine. This heifer does have that extra extension. I like the presence and the way she props up from the profile. Stout featured as well. A little set out in her shoulder, a little tighter in her heart. Need to make her a little more agile in the way she grabs the ground off either end of her framework. Here's another dense made kind of a female. It's got some bone and some power to her. A little rougher as you study her from the profile. Just doesn't blend together and piece together quite as smoothly. Next heifer is a little more eye appealing in terms of femininity. Gets a shot drier back in through her flank. A little tighter in the way she's made in her heart there. Like to just loosen her up a bit as well. The next heifer is a little freer of fat and uh, just a little fresher condition. Our heifer that comes behind her. Got to make her more stable from hock to ground and stouten her up. I like this heifer here that comes next to the end. Young man does a very good job of showing this heifer. She's big bodied. She's easy keeping. Just a little too much fat development up around her tail head and down into the base of her neck. Just need to lean her up compositionally. Heifer that closed the class is a little fresher. A uh, little trimmer up front. Runs out of bone. Runs out of substance and dimension in relation to a very competitive class. But a good group of those Brangus efforts all the way through. Really interesting class over here on our Beefmaster side. And the top four of these heifers, I think this is a, you know, this is a group of females that there's some, the variation that they bring to the ring is always, you know, that's the thing we have to kind of analyze them and figure out where to put them at and how to come together with them. You know, some of the things that, that this first place heifer has that I'd like to, you know, right off the first thing I'd like to change, maybe add a little bit of that excuse me, extra body that we have in these heifers that stand in third or fourth, but I think this heifer is more than adequate. She's big bone, powerful made. She's a female that's got a tremendous amount of length and performance. She's more than adequate. I think when we start talking about rib shape and flank in this female, I just like to, you know, as we compare to some of the others, she's probably not quite as soft, but I still think that she's sure good enough and sure deserves to be up at the front end of this class. And then this heifer that follows in second, really similar to her in kind, a female female that maybe is getting a little more shoulder, a little more front end in her when we compare it to our class winner. Female doesn't have quite as much bone and substance to her. And, uh, you know, females that probably be real honest with you, watch them walk away from you. None of these females are maybe as wide base as we'd like for them to be, but I think they're, they're sure adequate. They've got enough to them. I think they sure have to kind of deserve to be up at the front end. We have a pair of these females that are tremendously big ribbed. Center portion of their body is great. I mean, they are... They're as cowy as you can make one, but they're probably starting to get to that point where, especially the, the yellow heifer that stands down here in fourth, they get a little loose in that underneath. They get a little more jiggle to them. They don't have not quite as tight made in that area as we'd like for them to be. You know, it's kind of a... As much as we love that rib shape and dimension, we'd like for them to also kind of handle it a little better on the move and, and be able to kind of balance themselves up. This black heifer, I think, is a really great prospect. She's really green. We got a lot of time left on this heifer, but when she gets her stopped and pulled together, we give her give this female a chance to go ahead and power up, and she'll, she'll get around these heifers on the front end if we just keep her coming because I think she's – sound enough she's kind of neat enough made she's good on both ends i think she's female sure got a lot of future red heifer here the young man has she's probably getting a little bit out of balance just like the next heifer behind 
They get a little more front end in them. They don't want to balance up. They're going to be a little heavier up in that front end structure and not really give us that look that we have and uh, get them to, like the young lady's black and white effort that comes next. Her, her neck gets a little short. She gets tied into her shoulder a little tight, doesn't want to get around the ring and move like the rest of them. The black effort the young man's got, again, just a really nice prospect. She's got some length of neck, got some length of top, got some hip in her. She doesn't have enough of it to get her to the front end, but she's still going to be a, a nice prospect that's got a really nice future. Yellow heifer that comes next. Heifer that, again, we start talking about balancing one up. She's probably a little bit more out of balance than some of the others. A little more chest and neck and front end, throws that front end up on her front shoulder and not really balancing up. Red man's heifer, or the red heifer the young man's got next is a similar in kind, same way. Cattle that just need to give us a little more balance and eye appeal if we're going to get them any further up. But good set of cattle, congratulations. <coughs> Over in our Beef Master Show, Class 3, lined up with Ellie Grissett from Buffalo FFA on top. Followed by Sarah Wells from Grapevine FFA. Then Abby Burkhart, Spring Branch FFA. Fisher Hubbard, Friendswood FFA. Colton Clissel from LaGrange FFA. Then Linda Flissowski from Washington County 4-H. Hope Strasser from Grand Oaks FFA. Miguel Murrow from Spring Branch FFA. And then Isaac Brazinia from Jackson County 4-H. Class four was led by Quentin Garrett, Coleman County 4-H. I'm gonna turn it up to Dr. Bloomberg and we'll pick up where we left off. Another good class here, and five nice females in this class. So the heifer that leads off really has a striking look to her from the side, a really bold made kind of a female with lots of power and spring a rib to her. Yet when he gets her put together, really got a nice look up through her front end, adequate in the way that she gets around the ring. Just uh, the classiest heifer we got in this group was the most profile and the most substance to her. That's a good female there to grab the blue ribbon. The heifer in seconds, another loose made heifer. I like the way she gets off of her hind leg. She's very flexible, like that about her extremely well. Doesn't have the lower third dimension we find in the heifer that wins the class. Not as powerful and stout and stalky in terms of her build, but a good kind of a female in terms of looseness of structure, still having some depth of body and some volume to her. The next heifer is a real brood cow in the making. I really like the rib, the mass, the power this heifer brings. A little deeper in the floor of her chest and just throws off her balance as you run her from her chest back up into her flank. Uh, she doesn't have quite the Zaz of the top two cattle. Big stout featured heifer to come out next, one that's a little stiffer off either end of her framework, a little emptier middled as well, but I like the heaviness of structure. She's broad and dense as you take her to the ground, just need to piece her together a little nicer from the side. Then the heifer that closed the class, uh, another good female, uh, doesn't have quite as much internal dimension, wants to break a little more in her top line, but if you like the way this heifer gets around the ring, she's got a good solid structural base underneath of her that just doesn't piece together uh, quite as good as some of our other cattle on up in the lineup. Get ready on the beef master side to pick this first division. Great set of calves. Had a lot of them come through here. You know, like it always is early in the day, you know, with these early cattle, you're going to get a lot of variation, a lot of different kind, but I think a lot of qualities in the ring. Good set of them. Give these young exhibitors a nice hand for bringing them out. We'll pick our champion in reserve. Congratulations.
And that's your heifer calf division for our Beef Masters show. Your champion comes from Sarah Wells in Grapevine FFA, coming out of Class 1. Your reserve champion, heifer calf in our Beef Masters show, comes from Class 3, shown by Ellie Grissett from Buffalo FFA. Just a single entry here in this class, but really a nice female as you study her in terms of refinement and femininity and attractiveness. Uh, this effort, really nice in her shoulder design, sets her neck up good at the top of her shoulder. Enough rib and power as you take on her back and then still moves with some comfort, some stability off both ends. So we'll see how she stacks up in this division as we get them back out here. But a quality entry for you, young lady. She does a good job on the stick as well. It's a nice female. Good job to her. That was a nice breakdown of a single entry from Class 10, shown by Corgan Ramirez from Victoria County 4-H over on our Brangus show. Finishing up some results from our Beefmaster show. In second from Class 4, Turner Koonsman from Alito FFA, followed by Meredith Ashley, Anowak FFA. Hannah Pace, Henderson, FFA. Then Raleigh Upham, Brazoria County 4-H. Charlie Nova, Seagaville, FFA. And then Macy Thickpen from Victoria County 4-H. Then Blake Thickpen from Victoria County 4-H. Back over in our Brangus show, we've got class seven results. It was led by Caleb Horner from Taylor County 4-H. Followed by Ross Donahoe, McLennan County 4-H. Ernest Bales from Cold Spring FFA. Then Landon Stewart, Victoria County 4-H. Shaley Meter from Wiley Abilene FFA. And six, Patty Bradley from Edna FFA. Then Colton Smith, Hood County 4-H. Followed by Wyatt King, Wilson County 4-H. Then Rigby Bales from Cold Spring FFA. And Zion Keller from Grand Oaks FFA. Class 8 in our Brangus show, led by Bram Christensen, Brazoria County 4-H. Tyler Kasner from Falls County 4-H. Corgan Ramirez from Victoria County 4-H. Then Grace Curry, DeWitt County 4-H. And Kinley Smith, Hood County 4-H. Another good lineup here in our second division of Brangus and just the three classes. We had one uh, pretty good sized class and then a couple of smaller classes here. But these females, I think, a really good set of these uh, in this middle division. I think uh, a very, very high quality. They got some flexibility. They got some extras uh, as you start to build them on. I think the young uh, people are doing an excellent job presenting them, though. In this division, I think there's a pretty clear champion, though. This heifer out of the middle class will be our division. Congratulations.
Another good heifer comes into the lineup. We talked about her, really a loose-made female that's got some depth of body. The other one, though, that suits me second best is our heifer up out of the front class that the gentleman has. She'll be our reserve in this division. Another really nice class on our beef master side, these November, December females. A pair of heifers up on the front end, a lot of similarity in these cattle. I think the length of neck, length of top, kind of the rib shape they bring to the ring, they're very similar in kind. As I read these heifers and look at this class winner, I think we have just a little more female in our class winner. I think she carries back a little more stifle, carries down in with just a little more hip, get her on the move, and she's going to carry it, walk just a little, track a little wider, has a little wider base to her than the heifer that follows in second. I love the way these cattle are put together, though. They're long neck, very extended. Those little necks pop up out of their shoulders. They give us some length of top, length of hip. They've got some real grow to them. Their cattle that look like they have a lot of future. The heifer in third is kind of this heavy made, big bone, kind of rugged individual. She'll probably tighten up a little bit when we compare her to the two standing above her. She gets a little more shoulder in her. She's getting a little wider out in that front end structure, but this is a big bone, stout made one that you really have to appreciate that about her. Young man's heifer that comes next, Going to be a little more conventional when we compare her to the three that stand above her. But I like her rib. I like her doability. I think she's got a lot of future. It's just kind of a really nice cow prospect. She's probably not quite as jazzy as those ones that stand above her to make a show of her. But today, I sure like her from just being a good cow prospect. Black heifer that comes next. You know, really extended. Probably starting to come apart a little bit on us. She's got so much length of top that she wants to roll those pins a little, drop her hips, um, not be quite as strong right up in her shoulder as we'd like for her to be, but still a really nice female young man's heifer that comes next. Again, we start talking about these cattle that maybe get a little bit out of balance. They're going to show us a little more front end structure, a little more chest and neck and shoulder. You want to throw them out of balance. This is a female similar. It kind of built that way, but she's got some rib and she's got some substance to her, and that kind of gives her an advantage over these next two heifers that follow next. Good cattle, good doing cattle. We're going to soften them up balance them up, give them just a little more power if we're going to get them on the front end. But a good set of cattle. Congratulations. Big results from our Brangus Heifer Show. Your champion junior heifer comes from Class 8, exhibited by Bram Christensen from Brazoria County 4-H. Your reserve champion junior heifer comes from Class 7, exhibited by Caleb Horner from Taylor County 4-H. Over in our Beef Masters show, Class 7 was led by Bridger Etheridge, Nacogdoches County 4-H. Then you have Sydney Bohawk from Victoria County 4-H. Hunter Frost from Giddings FFA. Then Jake Kluwer from Alvin FFA. Followed by Wes Shaw, Wheeler County 4-H. Then Daniel Dominguez, Seagaville FFA. Then Ryder Clissell, Fayette County 4-H, and Reagan Thomas from Trent FFA.
Another good, strong class here in the Branga Show, and a big, stout, well-made female that wins this class. I really like the bend and give she has to her hind leg, a, a female that's just got lots of correctness to her. You know, she's not going to win any beauty contests up front, but I think she's sure good enough uh, for me in this regard. You could set her into her shoulder a little differently, and that's probably where the heifer that comes in second has the advantage, really tidy in the way her shoulder sits onto her body, really nice at her shaking down on this female. Gets a little rounder out of her hip. Uh, uh, wants to weaken right in there in her top line and doesn't have quite as much substance as our heifer that wins the class. That's a good pair of females. Heifer that comes in third is very attractive. She's got a nice look about her. The one that's going to have a gorgeous udder as well. I think when you get her in uh, to motherhood, doesn't have quite as much uh, just stoutness all the way through as what we find in our top pair in this group, but a very useful kind of a female that's got a lot of replacement value and looks like she'll be one that you can retain in your herd for a while. Another big bodied, easy keeping heifer to come out next like the depth rib and flesh that she brings to the table just doesn't hook up with quite as much coordination in terms of her look doesn't have quite as much eye appeal as some of our other females in here the next effort is really deep bodied really broody in her design i like the extra softness that she's got just need to take a little condition off this effort make her just a little more genuine as you get in behind her she wants to funnel from hooks to pins and down into the ground then the heifer that closed the class and maybe a shot fresher than our heifer that goes out right ahead of her she gets it's a little emptier middle and a little more deficient in terms of power, but still a pretty good made kind of a female that has some flexibility to her. Just need to give her a bit more strength as you compare her to the cattle on up the line. Pretty logical class winner, I think, on this side of the ring. Just a good female that just puts so many good things together. You can just really stand it up in her front end. I love her front end structure. She ties in as good into those shoulders as anything we have on here. She'll get around the ring sound enough, wide enough base, attractive enough. I think she's just kind of a pretty logical place to start with. And then I think the challenge for me gets to be between these second and third place females. Second place heifer is sure not as heavy made as ever the stands behind her, but I think she's sounder at the ground. I like her better. Through her shoulder down into her knee down to the ground, I think she just takes a better step. I think she squares up a little better. They're all adequate made, uh, big ribbed, high volume, long extended cattle, have plenty performance to them. This this really heavy made, high growth female that comes third. I, you have to appreciate the, the substance and dimension she brings. I get a little concerned about her and the heifer that stand right behind her. They're not quite as squared up on those front feet when they walk as I'd like for them to be. They kind of want to pigeon a little bit, not give us a real sound, true step we'd like for them to do. So we follow up with the dark red heifer. Just really a good female. We just, you know, in this class probably we're going to have to have more of her just like the young ladies heifer that comes next. We need more cattle to compete with those up there. Just widen them out, make them wider base, bigger rib, more top and dimension in them. But from a structure standpoint, they're pretty good cattle that have a lot of future to them. Just have to give them a little chance to catch up. So nice job. Congratulations. We've got some results from our Brangus show. Class 13 was led by Kara McKee, Russ County 4-H. Then Coit Clark, El Campo FFA. Followed by Tack Ferris, Taylor County 4-H. Then Avery Rogney from Royal FFA. Catherine Jackson, Austin County 4-H. Then Kinley Smith from Hood County 4-H. Over on our Beef Master side, Mr. Sankey lined up Class 8 with Kimberlyn Sanders from Kaufman County 4-H on top. And you have Cara Sarah Kate Shaw, Wheeler County 4-H. Skylar Lavender from Columbia FFA. Then Braden Lee, Millsap FFA. Then Jack Dudensing from Columbus FFA. And Amanda Alger from Nacogdoches FFA.
Nice trio of heifers here in this class. A brand gets a heifer that wins the class. You really like in terms of her freshness, her body, her structural integrity. I think this heifer really useful in terms of her design. A female that really like the extra cushion that she has at the ground, and yet a female that's uh, bred up like she needs to be, starting to have a, a nice uh, showing there in her udder. I think just a real quality heifer here to win the class. A good heifer that comes in second. I really like the freshness. Uh, one that's really nice up front. It really gives you a strikes a good pose. She just doesn't have as much horsepower as our heifer that wins the class in the middle part of her body, just in terms of spring of rib and volume, but a good heifer. This heifer does have a little more power, uh, a little more midrib and flank in her, even than the heifer that goes right ahead of her. She gets a little choppier in terms of her movement, just a little set out in her shoulder, and I'd like to loosen her up a bit. Uh, she's going to be one, though, that I think is going to make a good, productive brood cow for the young man. Just doesn't have uh, quite the symmetry to her line as the two heifers that beat her in the class. Really nice pair of these late summer heifers on the beef master side. And, you know, kind of the obvious thing even coming in, you'd think, well, we're just going to use this big powerful female to win the class, which, you know, I think at the end of the day, we probably can't back up from the fact that she is big bone and stout made and has more to her. She's probably too advanced right now for me at this stage of the game, probably a little further along than she needs to be condition-wise. like to freshen her up. I, the dark red heifer this young lady's got, I think she's got a tremendous amount of potential. I think right now, today, she gets a little bit overrun by a, a female that's got a head start on her, but I think this is a heifer calf that puts a lot of good things together. Give her a chance, let her go ahead and mature a little bit and come up, and I think you'll see this heifer do good things. But from a quality standpoint, she's a good one. She's good and sound at the ground. She just needs a little more time. Young lady's working pretty hard to try and get her shown. We'll give her a chance. Congratulations on a nice pair of females. That was class nine in our Beefmaster show. Led by Megan Ruther from Columbus FFA. Then Kendall Schnell from Lee County 4-H. We've got class 14 in our Brangus show, which lined up with Caden Pickett from Liberty County 4-H on top. And you have Alton Edwards from Barnum FFA, and then Colton Smith from Hood County 4-H. Well, a really nice way to close out our Branga show. Uh, three first calf heifers uh, that have all laid down and done what they need to do. And uh, you sure like to see a show heifer that gets into production. And then the cow that wins the class, I think she's got an advantage as you study her just in terms of refinement and femininity. A uh, really nice udder underneath this female for a first calf heifer. Uh, got a nice coupon at her side as well. That's obviously doing uh, uh, good in terms of growth and having some body. Just a beautiful cow with a lot of look and balance to her. She's got an advantage 
advantage in movement over the cow that comes in second, the angle of her shoulder. I don't know how you can make a, any nicer first calf heifer uh, that's done her job here, so that's a good female here to win the class. Cow that comes in second, again, you like the look and the balance. There's some similarity uh, to the cow that wins the class in terms of look. She doesn't have quite the stability off of her front end. She's a little straighter in the edge of her shoulder. She's got a big strap and bull calf inside uh, that's got some value and some quality to him. Probably the best calf comes on the cow here in second. Uh, this cow is just a little emptier middle. Doesn't have quite as much to her. Not quite as smooth as our cow that wins the class. Good cow in third as well. Beautiful stout female that's good from the side. She's not quite as tidy in her udder, but obviously she's doing a good job with this calf. They just maybe don't as a pair balance up quite as well as our top two individuals, but I commend them for getting this heifer calved out, bringing her to town. That's another good female here in the third spot. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That was class 15 in our Bring Us show, led by Claire Horner from Taylor County 4-H. Then you have Caleb Horner from Taylor County 4-H. And then Andrew Miller from Canyon Lake FFA.
Interesting class on our beef master side. Probably not just a real dominant female out here that's going to come in here and just run away with this thing, but the dark red heifer that we're going to start the class with, she puts the most good things together for me. She's, a, you know, probably a little further along. Uh, we're starting to get into some, you know, these older mature females. Condition starts to be an issue. we got to work around. But, you know, this female, if she's not perfect right behind her shoulder she's not perfect down at the ground probably wants to twist just a little bit more and i'd like for her to but i think when you combine all the things all the advantages she has pretty hard to not let her win this class I mean, tell you what i'd like to change about her be right behind her shoulders change that and i think that change little bit on those front feet but boy from there back that rib shape that volume the hip that she has the advantage she has in balancing up when compared to the young man's heifer that comes second it's a big powerful female stand second boy i mean big ribbed bulky made she probably isn't as attractive package as our class winner she's got a little more chest in her she kind of wants to kind of and probably doesn't have a, that much advantage down at the ground if she was uh you know that much better footed we'd uh, we'd let her win uh, maybe or move a little further up but she's a female that you sure the power and dimension that she has gets her up on the front end this effort that comes third honestly you know this is a female that's got a tremendous future to her i love her she's fresh she's you know, probably the, when we compare to the heifer standing here, maybe not quite as far along, which is to her advantage if we're going to go further down the road with her. A lot of quality in this heifer. Today she gets a little bit outpowered, but I think you can sure look down the road and see this one's got a lot of future, still got a lot of good left in her. Heifer that comes next gets a little bit upright in her front end. She throws her out of balance a little bit, doesn't want to take a big long stride to smooth herself out when we track her around the ring. She wants to throw up into her front end and probably step up into that shoulder more than we'd like for her to. I like her clean underline. I like her clean right down to her shoulder and her chest better than the dark heifer that follows out next. Big rib female that this young man has. Probably a heifer that, you know, just from on both ends of her, we'd like to change her down at the ground when we get her on the track. So, good set of cattle, though. Congratulations to these exhibitors. Get over to our final division here in the Brangus Show. I really like uh, all six of these heifers as they come back out here. Uh, I think all, th all six of them have some quality. All six of them move well. There's some differences in build and kind, and uh, some of them have some extra features, some a little more eye-appealing, but I think a really good set of females. My preference in this division, though, comes out of class two, this young man here. She's going to be our champion. Congratulations to him. Bring in that heifer that's really nice, balanced. Uh, that was second in that class. I like her look, like the set of her hind leg. Uh, we got a big stout heifer here out of class one. You can probably tuck her shoulder into her. Then you got a cow uh, down here that's really got a nice look about her. Uh, pretty good coupon at her side. Well, maybe a little more in her working clothes, but I think a real solid female. So another very good uh, division here. My reserve in this division is going to be this pair out of class three. Congratulations to them. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That's your senior heifer division, your champion senior heifer in our Brangus show. Comes from class 14, exhibited by Caden Pickett from Liberty County 4-H. Your reserve champion senior heifer in our Brangus show comes from class 15 and Claire Horner from Taylor County 4-H. Over in our Beef Masters show, class 10 results. It was led by George Shackelford from Columbia FFA, followed by Forrest Hubbard, Friendswood FFA, then Bronk Thompson, Wills Point FFA, Cameron Shackelford from Columbia FFA, then Wade King from Wilson County 4-H.
Get ready to pick this second division on the Beefmaster side. Just a good set of cattle out there. These are uh, good cattle, functional, useful cattle. They're cattle that I think are, are can get around the ring well. They take a good long stride. They're just good, useful cattle that have a lot of future. So give these young exhibitors a nice hand. We'll pick our champion reserve. Congratulations on a good set of them. As we come to the selection of our champion Brangus uh, here, uh, really a nice set. I thought the cattle were really, really good as they come to us. And, uh, you know, some differences, I thought, between them. And depending on uh, maybe where you want to put some emphasis, you could probably swap uh, these around maybe. Uh, but I I'm really pleased as they get back out here. No, they're not exactly alike, uh, but they're the cattle that suited me the best. We got a good heifer calf, a nice heifer out of this second division, and a big, uh, strong heifer out of class, or division three. So it's a really good set set of females. I think uh, uh, for me, there's one that just hit me a little harder as they come through the gate. And, uh, you know, for me, it's one that's kind of stick with you. That's what uh, I think is important. And this heifer is uh, just pretty memorable in her look. I, I like her density, uh, just a lot of quality. So uh, let's give our Brangus exhibitors a good round of applause, if you will. I'll get you a champion here in this division. It's a good heifer calf as well. I like her depth of body, just her quality from the side. Uh, I think a female that's really good in terms of her design. A nice heifer out of Division Two here. Breaks a little bit behind her shoulder, but we liked her athleticism, her stoutness of feature. Then a big, good uh, yearling heifer here that's still pretty fresh compositionally. Got a good udder. I didn't think she was maybe quite as heavy duty in her bone work and just opened up as our heifer that ends up winning. But uh, you know, I think as you get them out here, I love the calf. Uh, I like the heifer out of Division Two. But it's hard to keep a big bread out of the mix for me when the guest work's done. So she's going to be our reserve champion. Over in our Brangus show, your champion Brangus effort comes from the junior division, exhibited by Bram Christensen in Brazoria County 4-H. Your reserve champion Brangus heifer comes from the senior division, exhibited by Caden Pickett from Liberty County 4-H. Division results in our Beefmaster Heifer Show. Your champion junior heifer comes from Kimberlin Sanders in Kaufman County 4-H. We have our reserve champion junior heifer coming from Bridger Etheridge from Nacogdoches County 4-H.
Nice pair of these heifers here as we start off uh, into the Red Brangus, a very, very high quality uh, group here. Uh, the heifer that wins the class really got a good look to her from the side, uh, one that balances up so good in terms of her makeup, good set to her hind leg as well, a female that's really functional. I think her advantage over the heifer it comes in second. When you set the cattle in motion, a little more settled in her top line, a little longer out of her hip, uh, but it's a good heifer to win the class. She beats a good one in second as well that's really well presented, a good bodied female. It's got some power to her. A couple things to tweak. Just lengthen her out of her hip and settle her in her top. Square her up just a little bit from behind, but that's an awful good pair of Red Brangus females here in Class 1. Deep bodied heifer to come in uh, third. One that's real cowy in terms of her look. Doesn't have quite as much eye appeal as our top two cattle in this group, but still a very solid heifer to land in the third spot. Heifer that comes next. I like the freshness of the composition. A heifer that gets a little flatter in her forerib, a little off in her hip. Doesn't have quite the body volume of the heifer right ahead of her. And the female that closed the class is refined and attractive. Just needs a little more substance and dimension for her to play up in this group. Really interesting class on the beef master side of the ring. And these top four heifers, there's, and all the way through, I think we've got a, a tremendous set of cattle in this ring right now at this age break. But, you know, for me, the heifer that probably puts the most good things together, we look at this red heifer, and I'll be real honest with you, the heifer standing second just from a phenotype standpoint, she really reached out and grabbed me, just one of those that you just kind of look at and kind of appreciate standing there looking at her. But when we stand her up there next to our class winner, there's just not as much female in second. This heifer that wins a class, this is a powerful made female. She's big hip, tremendous amount of width, still really feminine in the way she puts it together. She's neat in her shoulder, comes up out of her neck, lots of rib. I love this female from the standpoint of just an extra bit of power and dimension and width of base when she gets out and moves. Female just shows us some extra, probably as much dimension as we've had come through the ring for a female that carries it that well and holds herself together. Young ladies, heifer that comes next, like I said, uh, just from a phenotype standpoint, just super attractive to stand back and look at. Just need to, if we're going to get her around that heifer on the top end, we're going to widen her out at her pin down at the ground. We're going to give her just a little more true power. Another big rib, kind of high volume, long spine female. Heifer that probably starts to get a little bit more shoulder and chest up in her and it wants to throw her up on her front end a little bit, but it's a pretty nice cow prospect. A female that just like our black heifer that comes next. Our females that look like to me, they're going to make really good females. They're functional, useful, big rib, kind of a maternal type that I kind of like to see on the front end of a class. Females that are more than adequate, I think, when we start talking about do they have enough to them. This is kind of a heavy bone, big footed kind of a rugged made female this young man has. She'll break in behind her shoulders. She'll break in her top a little bit. We'd like to make her a little sounder structurally if we're going to get her onto the front end, but I, I appreciate that bone and substance and that kind of moves her up into the front end of this class because she is just one of those kind of heavy made ones. Young man's heifer that comes next along with these cattle. We're starting to get some length and extension in them from one end to the other, but we're this young man's female probably gives up a little bit of the rib shape that stands on the front end. Black heifer has a little more shoulder, a little more chest, and wants to throw herself out of balance. She didn't, I love her center portion of her body, that big rib in her, but she doesn't quite have the balance or the attractive look that we have standing above her. Red heifer this young lady has, this is a heifer that I studied quite a while. I, I think this heifer's still at the point where there's still some future here. I think we'd like to probably just get her a little longer bred to get that, re get that rear flank in her. But you look at it, 
the way she's built up in her front end and into her shoulder, down her top. She's a female that's got a tremendous future. She's good in her underline. She's good in that neck structure. Just kind of let her get a little softer and soggier. And I think you'll see down the road this would be a female I think you could be attracted to. Herford Mark female that comes next, again, gets a little bit out of balance, a little more chest floor, a little more uh, shoulder in her, and just kind of throws her up on her front end. Heifer that falls in next, again, a female that uh, just going to have to have a little more bone, a little more substance and foot to her. We're going to get her further up, just like our brindle heifer that follows out. We just need a little more cow there to get up on the front end. But congratulations, a good set of female. First goal at Rangus, classes 8 and 10. First goal at Rangus, classes 8 and 10. A lot of give and take in this class of Red Brangus. I think you can kind of jumble these around uh, however you see fit. I, th I think the heifer that puts the most good together is the young man's in the, the flower-colored shirt here. Just in terms of body and having some center rib, and yet with that, still pretty appropriate in terms of her frame size. You know, she's a little stiffer, uh, maybe off either end than what she needs to be, but I think this heifer puts the most quality presence from the side with enough depth of body and enough volume to her. We're going to land on her to win the class. No doubt the performance oriented heifer comes in second really a stout featured female that's big footed and heavy bone a little emptier bodied and a little straighter as well off either end of her framework uh, she's one that might want to tone down just a notch in terms of her frame size but big hipped and very powerful and very stout if she just get out and cover her track a little differently I think you could land on her to win the class but as is we use a little more moderate heifer with a little more center rib the heifer that comes in third uh, one that uh, again you like the body depth uh, again a little more appropriate maybe in her frame size and then our heifer that goes in second she just gets out of balance in her underline and wants to get up in her top line as well so I think you got three heifers you kind of got to decide between you can kind of mix them around how you see fit the heifer that closed the class is deep bodied but she's recognizably the most fragile heifer we got in the group gets a little ill in terms of her makeup there and from a balance perspective I like the body though I like the rib again gonna be real easy keeping I think when you get her in production just need to stouten her up Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. As we're getting close here in our Beefmaster show, we've already finished our Brangus show. Just as some reminders to our exhibitors, all breed champions. All breed champions are going to have to report to the vet area after selection. All breed champions to the vet area after selection. They will be needed to be accompanied by a parent at this time. A parent will need to accompany the breed champions to the vet area. We just heard Dr. Bloomberg break down class two in our Red Brangus show. It was led by Roy Les Lessiker from Fayette County 4-H. Followed by Addison Brenneman from Parker County 4-H. Then Cade Whitten, Needville FFA. And Harrison Patterson from Tioga FFA. Just a single entry here in our Red Brangus show, uh, so we'll make short work here as we get her back to the division. But a nice heifer, one that really has a good look to her. She's very feminine, very attractive in terms of her design. Still has the right kind of rib shape and volume and still pretty agile as you ask her get out and go. A quality heifer there that's got some balance, some length of hip, like the stability of her top line. So we'll see her. She comes back out in this division, but a very useful female. Good job to this young lady. Very nice, Dr. Bloomberg. That was class three, a single entry from Casey Cerny from El Campo FFA. Class one results from our Red Brangus show. Lined up with Kinley Kirk from Robertson County 4-H on top, followed by Presley Jacob, Royal FFA. Then Henley Lessiker from Flatonia FFA. Then Dylan Henry, Matagorda County 4-H, and Tyson Murphy from Brazoswood FFA. Over in our Beefmaster show, we've got Class 13, led by Hannah Pace Henderson FFA. Then Kirsten Centimaro from Sweeney FFA. 
followed by Audrey Potter, Columbus FFA. Weston Brooks, Hardin Jefferson FFA. In fifth, Jack Shackelford from Columbia FFA. Then Cody Escalante from Somerset FFA. Keston Lusty from San Saba County 4-H. Then Isabella Thomas, Johnson County 4-H. Mackenzie Whipple from Columbia FFA. And Lana Potter from Columbus FFA. Nice pair of heifers here in our Red Brangus to close out the calf division. Uh, heifer up in the front here, the, the fire branded heifer is going to lead off, and she's just got a little more balance, a little more symmetry to her. I like her heaviness of structure and her substance. Uh, this heifer's got a pretty good look to her from the side as well. I think she's just built a little tougher at the ground. Uh, she does a little more stoutness all the way through. Young man's heifer here uh, has got a good look to her from the side. Very feminine, very angular in her shoulder design. A little frailer in terms of her bone work and probably doesn't get out and cover a track quite as nice as our heifer that wins the class. He's doing a good job with it. That heifer's a little amped up. He's hanging right with her. That's a nice pair of cattle, though. Young lady's going to win our class. Young man here is going to be second. Nice set of these older females. Dark red heifer that wins a class. Kind of that domination for me. I think there's some power, some substance. Some bone and foot, stands down on a pretty good foot and gets around the ring pretty well. And I think she's starting to show some other development. She's starting to kind of look like a young cow. And I sure think there's a, a lot of future in this female that wins the class. Kind of gets a little more of a toss up here between second and third. We're going to moderate into a heifer that's probably got a little more shoulder in her. Probably wants to break a little more. I love her rib shape. I realize that, you know, the advantage she has. I mean, it's a it's a great thing to calve one and, and get one on the ground and bring one to the ring. You lose a little bit when they hollow out some, and if you can't get them brought back around. And, you know, a female that stands second that, you know, similar in kind are a class winner. She's just a little more moderate, probably not as, you know, probably not as much performance and growth as I'd like in some of them, but still. I think she's a functional, useful kind of female, very deserving of being on the front end. Appreciate this pair that comes in third. Uh, young man's got a nice cow. You know, they, well, I could talk about, you know, you, you calve these out and you pray they have a good udder. She's got a good udder. She's a nice female. It looks like she's got a lot of future to her. Like to see her down the road as we get her a chance to kind of fill back up and rebound out of this cabin this early in life. But got to appreciate the fact she is fertile and she's doing a nice job with a really good calf. Female that comes next is a heifer that if we could just make her a little, give her just a little more power and put her on a little more substance and stand her down on a little more bone, I think she'd be a lot harder to stop in this class. Today she gets a little refined and she wants to kind of stand on a finer foot. Not as much female there as what we have standing on the front end. Black heifer is a big girl stout female have for the tremendous amount of rib in her she's got a nice udder coming under you know when we compare to those heifers that stand above us uh, she's probably sure not as wide based sure doesn't have as much to her as what we see in those class winners but a good female looks like she's got a future we're going to come back with a yellow heifer that is a little heavier in her construction she is going to have a little more bone and substance doesn't want to uh, show us quite the dimension that we have in the front end of the class. Again, we started looking at utter development in these females. Get into these heifers that aren't quite as far along from a maternal standpoint. That I think uh, you sure have to give advantage to these cattle that are bred early, that are starting to show us some udder or get to where we want to be as we end up with a set of females that just I don't think are far enough along from a maternal standpoint to make them get them any further up in class. We've got some bigger cattle that just need to look a little bit more like cows at this stage of the game. So congratulations on a good class.
Thank you very much, Mr. Sankey. That was class 14 in our Beefmaster show, led by Fisher Hubbard, Friendswood FFA, and Braden Lee, Millsap FFA, followed by Lozen Mazak, Columbus FFA. Then in fourth, Landon Flasowski from Washington County 4-H, followed by Kenna Minton, Alvin FFA, Emily Minchu, McLennan County 4-H, then Hayden Lee, Millsap, FFA. In eighth, Haley Rudloff, Washington County, 4-H. Then Cooper Taylor from Lexington, FFA. Over in our Red Brangus show, class four, two heifers lined up with Grace Sutton on top from Brazoria County, 4-H. Followed by Ryder Bain, Williamson County, 4-H. Not a lot of numbers here as we start our Red Branga show, but a lot of good in each one of these heifers that are out here, and we got a nice lineup, and we had some decisions to make in a couple of those classes. Uh, there's some give and take between them, but uh, as we get them back out here, I'm pretty set on the two that we're going to send to our champion lineup here later uh, in the Red Branga show. That's just a pair of heifers out of class one. We're going to keep them two together. They're going to be champion and reserve in this division. <laughs> Interesting pair of heifers on the Beefmaster side, and we're going to just run them like they came in here. We're going to use this red heifer to win the class and pick on her. We're going to pick on her because she isn't far enough along. The advantage, utter development-wise, obviously, in our black heifer that follows second. But, you know, at this stage of the game, I still have to appreciate the width, the width of base, the width and dimension that our red heifer has when we compare her to the young lady's heifer that stands second. I think, uh, you know, realizing that we just talk about them, you get to this stage, man, if you want to win one of these, try to get one of these older heifers, at least get them far enough along in production, they kind of look like they're going to make cows, and I'll give advantage to the black heifer, she's starting to show us a little bit of, of somewhat of an utter development, she gets a little flatter made, a little narrower down at the ground, and so we're just going to have to run with the power of the class winner, but good cattle, young lady's doing a nice job, congratulations. Thank you, gentlemen. That was class 15 from Mr. Sankey in our Beef Masters show, led by Gracie Reed from Alvin FFA. Followed by Peyton Swanky from Lee County 4-H. Meanwhile, in our Red Brangus show, your champion heifer calf, Dr. Bloomberg double-dipped and went both from... Huh? Both of our Red Brangus Heifer Calf Champion. Champion comes from Class 1, Kenley Kirk, Robertson County 4-H. New Reserve. Comes from Presley Jacob and Royal FFA.
I think a close placing between these two heifers in this class. A gentleman in the cowboy hat's going to lead off. I think just a little cleaner made, a little more attractive heifer here to lead off the class. Uh, I really like the way this heifer gets around and scoots in terms of flexibility. She just props up with a little more eye appeal, a little more symmetry to her than our big stout heifer to come in second. This one is a grizzly and just an ox in terms of power and dimension and bone. like that about her real well. She's very, very cowy. Gets just a little duller up and through her front end and a little set out in her chest. I didn't read her being quite as stable as you asked them to get out and go. That's a close pair of heifers, though, that I think both have a lot of good in them. The heifer that closed the class, a little more sensibly sized, a deep-bodied heifer that's got some capacity to her, a little rougher as you study her out of her hip, a little more fragile in terms of her bone work as well. Doesn't hook up with quite the eye appeal we find in our top pair of cattle, but good set, a close placing between one and two. Get ready to pick this last division. Beefmaster side, just a good set of cattle out there. These are cattle that, again, we talk about future and kind of what they can do for us. And I think there's a lot of quality in the ring. Sure, a, a good set of exhibitors have come through the ring. Give them a nice hand. We'll pick a champion in reserve. Congratulations. On our Red Brangus show, Class 8 lined up with Logan Woodruff from El Campo on top, followed by Kaylin Albright, Falls County 4 H, then Bailey Hartman from Munster FFA. Over in our Beef Master Show, your senior heifer division. Champion senior heifer comes from Hannah Pace and Henderson FFA. Your reserve champion senior heifer comes from Fisher Hubbard and Friendswood FFA. Nice heifer to lead off this class of Red Brangus females. Very, very powerful and good in terms of her look. Dynamite up through her front end and still very fresh. I like the extra substance that she brings to the table. Want to get just a little critical of her on her hind leg. I think you could alter it just a bit, but she goes ahead and powers right through this class because of the look, the dimension, and the quality that she brings to the table. Just a little rougher maid heifer here to come in second, but she'll be a pretty good brood cow for the young lady. Got some depth of body, has some spring of rib. Maybe just a little crest here at the top of her neck and doesn't have quite as much eye appeal as our heifer that leads off the class, but one that's got some depth of body, some volume to her, uh, one that moves pretty well as, uh, off from behind. We just need to give her a little more balance and eye appeal for her to climb around the heifer that gets the blue ribbon. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That was Class 10 in our Red Brangus show, led by Audrey Ivey, Eastland FFA followed by Kennedy Penn from Friendswood FFA. Get to the end of the day on these Beefmaster cattle. Six pretty good females in the ring. I think cattle that balance up well, they're attractive enough, and the way they're put together, they're good, and their underlying structure, they're good.
down at the ground, cattle with some rib and dimension. So just a really nice set of females. We've seen a lot of them come through. We've seen a lot of good ones. So give these young exhibitors a nice hand for bringing them out. We'll pick our champions. Congratulations. And that's your grand champion Beefmaster Heifer coming from Hannah Pace and Henderson FFA. Just the two heifers here in this division. Uh, a quality heifer out of class one that sure gives us a nice look. And I thought she propped up with a little more balance than the heifer that ended up being second, but I thought those two were close. And then really a nice heifer out of the patterns up good that's got some substance and feature in her. Comes out of class two that I think has got a lot of volume. So a uh, good pair of them here, but this heifer out of class two is going to be our division champion. Congratulations to her. We're going to follow up with this heifer out of class one to be the reserve. A nice group of these heifers here. Let's give these kids a good hand as they head back. And that's your junior heifer division in our Red Brangish show. Your champion junior heifer comes from Audrey Ivory in the Eastland FFA. Followed by Logan Woodruff from El Campo FFA with the reserve champion junior heifer. Just a pair of heifers here in this class as we start the next division. I think our next class is single entry, and we'll uh, kind of put a bow tie here on the Red Brangus. But this is a good heifer that leads off, one that's really easy keeping in her look. I like the brood cow utility softness that she has, and she still moves out with some comfort and some reach. She just got more to her, quite a bit huskier in her build than our heifer that comes in second. I like the refinement and the tidiness of the second place heifer, really refined about her facial features. I like the length and extension that she's got she just runs out of horsepower and doability in relation to the heifer that wins the class just need to stout her up a bit and bolden her up a bit in relation to that heifer that wins the group but a nice heifer though in terms of look and eye appeal and attractiveness
Wrapping up our Beefmaster Heifer Show, your reserve champion Beefmaster was a heifer calf from Sarah Wells from Grapevine FFA. Very nice single entry and a way to close out our Red Branga show. A lot of maternal function and skeletal quality in this cow that leads off. She's moderate sized, good ribbed, and she's got a pretty good udder laid in underneath of her as well. Got about a two week old coupon here at her side and she's doing a good job. Boy, she's handling the first cabin real well. With this effort tidy in her look. She's well balanced, very attractive, a very nice female here. Gonna make a nice uh, group here as we get these uh, back out here, pick this last division and send them on to our champion and line up a nice female. Congratulations. Thank you much, Dr. Bloomberg. That was class 15, a single entry from Mason Woodruff in El Campo FFA. Class 13 in our Red Branga show lined up with Caitlin Gilbert from Matagorda County 4-H on top, followed by Kiara Short in Brazoria County 4-H. Just some reminders in the barn. All exhibitors, please have your registration paperwork with you at all times when you enter the arena. Have your registration paperwork with you. This is still Rodeo Austin is a blow and go only show. No product will be allowed in your on your heifer's hair anywhere on it. If we find a product on your animal, we will turn you around at the gate. All breed champions. All breed champions are going to need to report to the vet area as soon as you are selected. And you must be also accompanied by a parent at this time. All breed bios, breed champion bios are due at the announcer's booth at the south end of the stadium. Final call, Simbra, class one. Final call, Simbra, class one. Final call, or excuse me, second call, Brahmin class four. Second call, Brahmin class four. First call, Simbra class two. First call, Simbra class two. Get into our final division here in the Red Branga show, and uh, we had the single entry pair here, and then the uh, duo out of the first class. This is a good trio of females. Uh, I think this cow calf pair kind of powers her way right through this division, though. A very nice female with a lot of good to her. Congratulations to you. She's going to be our champion. We'll follow up with this heifer out of class one to be the reserve. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That's your senior division. Your champion senior heifer comes from class 15 in Mason Woodruff from El Campo FFA in our Red Branga show. Your reserve champion senior heifer comes from Caitlin Gilbert in Matagorda County 4-H. Really interesting class on our bronze side to start out with. Just, you know, and I appreciate the fact that we've got some variation, we've got some different kinds in here, but, you know, to try to put that combination together of, of starting with structural soundness, trying to follow up with a female that's got enough to her and still look like she's going to be productive enough, it gets to be a bit of a challenge sometimes at an early stage on projecting these calves out and where we're going to be at at the end of the day. But I think the female that starts the class, realizing we got one of the younger heifers standing up here, but I think this is a female that sure puts a lot of good things together. For me, she's pretty good at the ground. 
decent enough in her underline. I think she's a female that shows us that she's going to have some width and dimension to her. I'd like to see her just maybe go ahead and, and bulk up a little bit more. You know, but I, I just feel like from this standpoint, from shoulder structure forward, I think it's a female. She balances up good. She's a heifer that's real soft on the ground and moves around. They, and uh, just a heifer that puts the most good things together. Kind of an interesting pair standing there in second and third. A lot of similarities, a little bigger, powerful kind of females. I think the heifer in second is better in her hip structure. I think she's better just from the hooks back. I think she carries down deeper, and I think she's a female that just balances up a little better and, and has a little more length of top, a little more length of hip. Gray heifer that comes next. She's appreciate her. She is big bone, powerful maid. She's a female that wants to get a little bit out of balance. She's going to give us a little bit more shoulder and front end. Not quite as much hip when we stand behind her. Not truly dimension as it is length. I think from hooks back, she'll shorten up and round up a little bit. A little more refinement in this red heifer. I know she's sure given up a, you know, probably some power on either side of her, but I think as a prospect, I think this is kind of an interesting one that as we go down the road with her, I think she's good enough right now to be up there. She just gives up too much dimension to get to the front end, but sure good enough, sound enough, I think structurally to kind of work on the front half. Uh, this gray heifer that comes next, it, really obviously the real power female in here. I just love the dimension that this heifer has. I I wish we could change her a little bit right behind her shoulders, expand her out a little bit, give her a little more chest to go with the shoulder that she has so she transitions better into that back third of her body. But this is a female that just, you know, you sure have to appreciate her because she is the powerful female in the class. She uh, She's big footed and big boned, maybe gets a little choppy. And, you know, unfortunately, she's, you know, pushing our young lady's shoulder. And so she doesn't give us a real easy stride like you'd like to see at her. Young lady heifer that comes next, again, we start talking about young prospects that have a lot of future and I think this one from a structural soundness standpoint and kind of what she could do down the road I think she'll be one that'll be fun to follow and she's got some natural rib in her she's got some bulk to her she's just a female that right now is probably just out horsed a little bit by some of those heifers stand above her come back with another female that does have some natural dimension to her from a structure standpoint though she's starting to really we're concerned about right behind her shoulder where she breaks in that top she gets a little restricted. She gets a little tight behind her shoulder, wants to roll her pins down. Big, powerful red heifer that comes next, a heifer that's got a lot of grow and performance in her, heifer that's starting to probably be a little shallower made right now when we look at them as we follow with a gray heifer that really on down at the ground just twists too much for me when we stand behind her. She's rolled in on those back feet. Going to have to get ahead of that if we're ever going to get her further up. And then a nice pair of young heifer calves that just give them some time, let them mature and catch up. But congratulations on a good class. Final call, Brahman, class four. Final call, Brahman, class four. Second call, Simbra, class two. Second call, Simbra, class two. First call, Simbra, class three. First call, Simbra, class three. Not a lot of numbers in our Red Brangus show, but the quality's certainly been there on the top end. Uh, uh, we had two very nice heifer calves, then a big stout heifer out of this second division, and then a really nice pair out of Division Three. And uh, I think the quality runs deep in all six of these females. We had some good cattle come through the line. We're not going to run back and talk each one of them again. Uh, so we've talked about them in class, then in division. Uh, I think there's one that's a, really a nice kind of a female. A lot of look, a lot of balance, a lot of eye appeal. This calf here is going to be our champion. Congratulations, sir. We're going to follow up with this other calf to be reserved. They came in class together. They're going to follow each other through. Those are two very good females and a really good show all the way through. Let's give all these kids a good round of applause. Show them our appreciation. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That's your grand champion, Red Bringus Heifer, coming from Class 1 in the Heifer Calf Division, exhibited by Kinley Kirk from Robertson County 4-H. Your reserve grand champion, Red Bringus Heifer, also comes from the Heifer Calf Division, exhibited by Presley Jacob and Royal FFA. We've got some results from our Brahmin show. Class one lined up with Madison Parker in Liberty County 4-H in first. Followed by Madison Parker, also from Liberty County 4-H. Then Lillian Burnett from Fannindale FFA. 
Followed by Reese Brown, Wimberley FFA. In fifth, Lauren Beth Lambert, Tarkington FFA. Then Kimber Calhoun from San Jacinto County 4-H. Then Kinley Rao from Carnes County 4-H. Followed by Branham Whitworth, Russ County 4-H. Then Branham Leroux, Pasadena Memorial FFA. And Caden Cheatham from Gonzales County 4-H. Another nice class on our Brahmin side. And I think the female that wins the class, see, from a movement standpoint, from taking a really nice stride, I think that's her advantage over the heifer that stands second. Along with it, she's got plenty of ribs. She's a female that's attractive mate. She's good in her underline. You know, I, it's, if we're going to pick on her and tell her what would change a little bit, maybe we'd change that just a little bit from her shoulder forward. We'd extend that neck out a little, pull a little more front end into her. But uh, still, I think rib shape and body and true dimension. When you stand behind this heifer, she's going to show us as much natural thickness and carry it as well as any of them we have and when we get in here in this class. So nice female to start. Heifer stands second. It's a heifer that I'm really attracted to standing still. She's a female that just reaches out and grabs you. I love her front. I think she's really nice made from her shoulder, chest floor up and forward. I think she's a female that's got some rib and dimension. And I'll be real honest with you, the biggest thing I'm concerned about is when she walks, especially this right side, she wants to just shorten her stride a little bit, not be quite as flexible as we'd like for her to be. And I know, you know, it's it's tough. You haul them in here, and they're, they're not here long, and they maybe don't get a chance to really limber up like they should, but she was just not quite as long-strided going around the ring as I'd like for her to be. Heifer that comes next, young lady's done a nice job of, you know, handling one when it's fresh and cool out, and they want to bounce around and kind of challenge you. 
you do a nice job, and I appreciate the fact that you kind of kept cool and handled her really well. And this is a good female, and I look forward to maybe down the road with this heifer, give her a chance to kind of soften up and get a little soggier made and kind of give her a chance to kind of mature some. But female that's got a lot of quality to her, and she's sure got a lot of substance to her. She's bigger boned and bigger footed than the red heifer that stands behind her. She's a female that's got some power. Just kind of give her a chance to kind of catch up, I think, from a maturity standpoint. Red heifer's a big centered female. She's got lots of rib and lots of dimension. Gets a little out of balance, probably gets a little more front end and up into her shoulder than we'd like for her to be, but still, you have to appreciate her, and I think we follow with a really nice pair of females that, again, we talk about these young calves and the future that they have and you know and how much good they can be down the road how much uh, you know management plays into these calves and I think there's a lot of quality here and there's a lot of good in them they're good kind of cattle we just give them a little more time to let them catch up congratulations Thank you, Mr. Sankey. That was class two in our Brahma show, led by Laney Siska, Seeley FFA. Followed by Meredith Ashley, Enoac FFA. Then Addison Sanders from Wharton County 4-H. Sarah Siska from Seeley FFA. Then Lena Rumke from Washington County 4-H. And Mackenzie Hardin from Venus FFA. Nice single entry in our February class. A heifer that looks like she's got a lot of future to her. She's sure got a lot of quality about her. Heifer that has some dimension to her. When you stand behind her and watch her walk away from you, she's got some width and power. Puts it in a pretty nice package, good in her underline. Uh, female that we'll sure look forward to bringing her back into our championship drive. Congratulations to this young lady. Nice, nice female to win this class. You just heard Mr. Sankey break down a calf shown by Haley Schoenvogel from Burton FFA, coming from Class 3, a single entry.
Nice way to start off our Simbra show here in a good deep class with a lot of good heifers all the way down the line. Uh, kind of an undeniable one, though, to lead off the class uh, just in terms of balance and eye appeal and so symmetrical in her lines. Uh, good down her top line and out of her hip, and then yet still stays so good. And uh, when you set her in motion, she's really got a clean look about her. She's really got some stability as you take her to the surface. Got a good big hind leg laid in her, and she's still functional. I think a very good heifer calf here to lead off in class one. Deep body bodied heifer that's real burly in her design to come out in second. I like the midrib and the flank this heifer has. She's a little more set out in her chest, not as good in her top line, and just doesn't have that striking presence that we find in the heifer that wins the blue ribbon in the class. But a good heifer from a doability perspective. She's got a, still a good construction to her hind leg and some flexibility to her. This one is just an ox in terms of power and stoutness to come out in third, really wide in terms of her dimension, really powerful out of her hip, big in her pin set and bold to the ground, a little more set out in her shoulder, a little snug in her forerib. I didn't read her being quite as ladylike up through her front end, but you want one that's husky and powerful. She certainly fits the bill in that regard. I'd like to just change her a little bit up and through her shoulder and make her just a little more feminine in that regard. There's the sleekest design when we got in the class that comes out in fourth. Really nice up through her front end. A real attractive, clean made, clean pattern kind of a heifer. She's a little too stilty off either end of her framework. A little more one dimensional in terms of her body. I like just soften her up and her rear rib and flank and make her a little cowier in terms of her look. This one does have a lot of utility, a lot of softness to her. I like her rib. I like her body. I like her capacity. She's a little plainer as you study her from the profile. You want to swap those two and say she's got more cow power. I wouldn't argue with you. I just thought she was a little duller as we studied her from the profile. Give this heifer a different set to her rear leg and I think she can climb in the class. One that's got a pretty good look about her. She's got some body just not stable enough from hock to ground. Wants to get up on her toes. We've got to rework that rear skeleton for me to gravitate her up in the class. This heifer's got a good look. She's very extended from the side. She's a little tubular in her design. Set her in motion. She wants to creep up in her top. I like the look. He puts her together. She's got a thoroughbred racehorse look to her uh, from the profile. She's just got to have more midrib and flank and capacity for me to get her up in the class. A baldy heifer to come out next, a deep centered female, probably a little more volume even in terms of drop to her flank and the heifer that goes out right ahead of her. She gets a little flatter though in her rib design, a little more concave in her forerib. Next heifer, I like the look. She just doesn't balance up uh, quite as well in her top line and out of her hip. We start to get on down into the class. Still some good cattle. Uh, really from a structure standpoint, we don't have a lot of issue with these as that yellow heifer's kind of running around the ring. Uh, she's a sound structured heifer as well. This a nice set of cattle all the way down the line. A very good, strong, deep class here as we start into the Simbra show. Let's give these kids a good round of applause here in round one. Nice way to start off. Over here on the Brahmin side, we'll get this going and keep moving cattle out of here. But after the wins of class, this is really the power female in here. This is a big top, big hip female. Probably nice at the ground as we're going to get. We've got some good cattle through here, and we seem to kind of fight feet and legs problems on a lot of them. But this is a female that's pretty good when we get her down. I well, really appreciate that hip in her, that width of top, and carries back with a tremendous amount of hip. Probably, right now, probably isn't quite as soggy as those heifers standing second and third. Maybe not quite as much rib, but adequate. And I think she's got enough, and I think the power that she brings to it just kind of puts herself up on the front end of this class, and you sure have to appreciate that real dimension that she has and that width that she shows us. Heifers in second and third, a couple of big-bodied, kind of big rib females. This gray heifer that stands second can appreciate her performance and her growth. Female probably wants to balance, maybe not balance up quite as well as her class winner, a little more shoulder in this female, a little more chest, but still a really good one that's got, I appreciate that, that dimension that she has, center portion of her 
body. She wants to maybe struggle just a tick when we get her on the move, but I think we're kind of working our way through that with a lot of them. This red heifer, heifer I'm really, uh, standing still, this is a heifer that I was really drawn to. I think a lot of this female, I love the way she's put together. I think she's clean enough and her kind, and I think there's enough to her. Biggest concern I have about her is when we walk her away from us and you look at her right down at the ground, she's going to roll out on those back feet and kind of twist in there and not be really sound and square at the ground, and I think that's an issue we got to deal with. Uh, another really nice, powerful female that comes next, a uh, young lady's gray heifer, gets just a little too tight through the center portion of her body. You know, she's got some substance, she's got some bones, she's got some power, she just gets too restricted and tight in her chest and back into her flank. Come back with another female, young lady does a nice job with a heifer that's enjoying the cool weather this morning and, and kind of working on her. I think that, you know, the problem probably with this heifer is when we get right behind her shoulders, going to want to expand her out a little bit, give us a little more female, a little more body and dimension, I think, as we go through it. This, uh, this gray heifer that comes next has got a lot of future. This heifer, it's great underline. She's good in her front end structure. She's a female. Again, we talk about them maybe just needing just a little more rib shape to them and, and flex them up a little bit. Get them to reach out and stride and be a tick more flexible. I think that's a heifer that could sure do it. Follow the young man's heifer that I think is a pretty nice prospect. I think she's one that give her some time, kind of let her catch up maturity-wise, kind of let her go ahead and power up a little. I think you'll see there's so many good things about her from an underlying uh, standpoint or kind of her front end. I think she's a female that sure has a lot of future. Just like this young, young lady's heifer that comes next, I see these females as just, you know, heifers that, you know, early in their life, early in their career, we we'll give them some time. This one's really got a lot of things about her you like. Uh, you know, right now, today, probably don't have as much of her there as we need to get her on the front end, but I think you let this heifer work down the road and let her mature, and I think you'll see she balances up so nice, good in her underlying, good in her front end structure. I think she's a female that sure has a lot of future. Another big bodied, powered up female uh, heifer that wants to get out of balance. She wants to have a little more front end than she needs. Rolls her pins under and doesn't really want to square up what, like we'd like for her to, but still I think you have to appreciate the cow power that female brings to the ring. Gray heifer that follows out again. Start talking about just needing a little more of them. Going to have to have more heifer to get up on the front end. Expand them out all the way through. Uh, heifer that follows next. It's probably out of balance a little bit, shows us a little more front end to really than we need. We'd like to change that, and then we follow up with a real nice pair of heifers. Just going to have to make them sounder at the ground to get them up on the front end. Congratulations. Nice trio of Simbra heifers here as we get into class two. A pretty easy winner here in this heifer that wins the class. She's the most feminine, attractive heifer we've got in the group. Really got a good look to her as you profile her from the side. Slings her neck up good at the top of her shoulder. She's the most agile one when we ask the cattle to travel. Gets out and covers her track and takes the most ground-consuming stride of any of these three heifers we've got in the class. Here's the pair of heifers that are similar in type and kind, but I see just a little more profile in the black heifer, big and stable out, wide pin set in this heifer, really bold down her top and really powerful in her design, a little stiltier off either end of her framework, a little coarser up and through her shoulder. I like to just loosen her up a bit in relation to our class winner. The red heifer is kind of the same song, different verse. Big bodied, stout, she's powerful. I like those things about her. A lot of capacity in this heifer, a little rougher in her shoulder, hook up into her forerib, and then with that, she's probably the most tentative in the way she grabs the ground from behind. I like to give her a little deeper heel. She gets just a little shallower back there, but still, I like the heifer's body. She's got some brood cow principle to her. Just need to loosen her up structurally, make her a little longer up front. Thank you, gentlemen. That was class two from Dr. Bloomberg in our Simbra show, led by Jacob Sansom from Brenham FFA, followed by Lily Bell, Wills Point FFA, then Kinley Compton from Franklin FFA. Class one in our Simbra show was led by Cameron Skaggs, Brazos County 4-H, followed by Lycan Rich, Tarkington FFA. Then Seth Grochi from Snook FFA. 
In fourth, Haley Hackett, Hooks FFA. And Kinley Kukarek from East Bernard FFA. Over on the Brahman side, we picked this first division of KF champions. And just a lot of quality has come through the ring, and a lot of good ones. You know, there's uh, lots of variation, which is always good in an industry. You, you don't all need the same kind, but we just need a lot of a lot of quality if we're going to sort through them. And I think we got a set of them out. In the ring. Young exhibitors have done a nice job getting us here. Give them a nice hand. We'll pick a champion in reserve. Congratulations. That's your champion, Brumman Heifer Calf, coming from Laney Siska and Sealy FFA. Your reserve champion, Brahman Heffercalf, comes from class four, exhibited by Lily Vogt from Kendall County 4-H. Finishing up some Brahman results, class four, again, led by Lily Vogt from Kendall County 4-H. Followed by Peyton Well, Boskville FFA. Followed then by Mackenzie Willard, Buffalo FFA. Then Jana Wall, Event FFA. And fifth, Lauren Beth Lambert from Tarkington FFA. Nice pair of these November, Decembers. I think the heifer that wins a class, the gray heifer, is probably going to reach into that point a little bit more where I want to see end point wise. I think this is a pretty good female. Shows us some dimension all the way through from one end to the other. You know, and I think she, she's good enough on the move. She maybe wants to tighten up just a little bit, but still, I think. You know, the, the package that she comes in is a little bit more attractive to me. I think she's good underlined, good in her structure, just a good female. She's got a lot of future. like this, uh, you know, the performance and the growth in our red effort is uh, always an advantage in a lot of situations. You know, probably uh, she doesn't want to put it together in the package quite like our class winner does. She gets a little broken more down her top and in her shoulder and doesn't want to balance up quite as well. And again, young lady doing a nice job on one that's wanting to fight her some, but good set of females. Congratulations to these exhibitors. That was class seven in our Brahma show, led by Grace Sutton from Brazoria County 4-H, followed then by Cameron Boatwright, Gonzales County 4-H.
little more give and take in this class. I think you could swap these around and certainly justify doing so, uh, depending on where you want to set some priorities. I don't think it's easy, but the heifer that wins, uh, to me, when you start weighing out positives, she's a stout featured heifer. It's mobile at the ground. She's good in the center part of her body. She's got an advantage as you get on top of the cattle in terms of upper rib shape, power out of her hip, and as you take her to the ground, a little denser featured heifer as well. I think she's got an advantage in movement over the second heifer. This heifer is more refined at the top of her neck. With that, though, she's a little more fragile in her bone work, and when you set her in motion, fighting the halter a little bit, but also I think she's made just a little straighter off both ends. She wants to creep up in her top line. I think that throws off her balance just a little bit from the profile. This heifer is probably not going to win any beauty contests up front, but the soundness of structure, looseness of build, uh, the way she motors off her rear leg, to me, elevates her in this class. I would like to clean her up through her front end a little bit, but she's a bold made heifer that's got some cowiness. I like the splash colored heifer here that come out next, uh, one that's got kind of an Oreo look to her. Uh, I like the balance, the eye appeal, and the attractiveness this heifer has. Uh, she's one that just closes up too much, so when you get in behind her, flatter in her rib design, narrow in her uh, pin width, gets a little narrower into her chest floor as well. A beautiful pattern to that heifer, just got to spread her apart from end to end. This heifer does have more punch, more dimension. You like the substance that she has, a little up on her toes, a little rigid up into her shoulder. Got a little issue, I'm not sure if it's hormonal or fly strike here in her udder. I'd like to balance that up a little bit as well, but that heifer stout. She's got some dimension, just need to loosen her up structurally. The black heifer that comes out next to the end, uh, one that's just a little upright into her shoulder. I don't mind that heifer when she stands. When you set her in motion, though, a little choppy in terms of her movement. Red heifer to close the class. Has a good look. Very eye appealing kind of a female. A little emptier middle, a little shallower bodied. I like to just soften her up and make her a little broodier in her design. Over in our Simbra show, class three was led by Brody Deasy from Belleville FFA. Followed by Avery Gluck from Columbus FFA. Then Callie Kokorek from East Bernard FFA. In fourth, Francisco Reyna from Luling FFA. Then Stockton Lightfoot, Fort Bend County 4-H. Ashlyn Dutcher from Brazoria County 4-H. Then Jameson Caps from Waller FFA.
Heifer that wins this class, I think, does so on the move. Uh, she's the one that's got the most comfortability at the ground. Uh, Heifer that gets out and covers her track with the most freedom and ease in terms of movement. Still a nice bodied heifer that's got a pretty cowy look about her. I'm not telling you she's as sharp up front as the heifer that comes behind her, but I still think plenty good enough in that regard. And to me, just the most useful in terms of her utility and her softness. This heifer is slicker in her look, no doubt about it. She's a little more attractive, a little fresher at the top of her neck, even perhaps perhaps, than our heifer that wins the class. Park the cattle, you switch the pair, set them in motion. This heifer comes up a little short in her stride. Uh, for me, a little hesitant in the way that she drives off of her front end. The tiger stripe heifer to come in third is a moderate, powerfully constructed kind of a female who's round, sound, and low to the ground. I like that about her. She's a little off in terms of her shoulder design, gets a little snappy on her ankles, and I'd like to just loosen her up in her stride. I like the stoutness. I like the burliness that heifer has. You give her a different set of running gears, I think it changes the complexion of where she may go in the class. The heifer that comes in fourth is a little looser built. I like her out of her hip a bit better, and I like the muscle pattern, the way it's draped onto her skeletal system a little nicer. She just runs out of balance, though, as you study her from the profile. She doesn't have quite as much look, uh, doesn't have quite as much eye appeal. She is a little looser built, just need to prop her up a little more symmetry from the side. Another interesting class we get over here on the Brahmin side. And the female that wins the class, just, you know, from a profile standpoint, standing off, look at them. She's one I'm really attracted to. She's bigger ribbed. She's kind of a more powerfully constructed female. And just be real honest with you, she disappoints me a little bit when we walk her away from us. She wants to narrow down a little bit at her base, not be quite as wide tracking as I'd like for her to be. And I'd hope maybe that, you know, of these top three or four females, if, if we're going to beat her, then we're going to beat her with one that's a little better in that area, but I don't think we've got one that's that much better and, and good enough to get around our class winner. You know, when we start comparing our second, third, fourth place females, the second place female I think is better from her shoulder back, kind of right behind her shoulders. You know, she's got some, uh, pulls herself together. She's a little better in her hip structure from her hooks back, has a little more power. I think when we start looking at real expression in those females, she's just a kind of a nice made female that doesn't, you know, probably doesn't give us quite the look the, of rib and dimension that we have and have her standing on either side of her, but still I think she's more inadequate and I think she's good enough. She gets around the ring, takes a little better stride I think and reaches up and grabs it a little better than we compare to the heifer that comes third. Young lady's heifer does comes next and she does a really nice job of getting this heifer set. Get her on the move though, we'd like to change her just a little bit. Like to flex her up a little bit. Like for her to hold her shoulder together a little more when she breaks in there right behind her shoulder. Doesn't want to be quite as full bodied as we'd like for her to be and we start looking from her shoulder back wants to get a little more restricted likewise this young man's heifer that comes next female from a structure standpoint just you know if we could just widen them out a little bit all the way through and just give them a little more boldness and bolder sprung. I think this is a female that sure has a lot of quality to her. has got a lot of good to her, things we can appreciate about. I love this red heifer standing still. I think this is one phenotypically, I just so many good things about her. She again disappoints me a little bit. I don't think she's flexible enough when we get her on the move. She gets a little straight at her pasterns, need her to soften up a little bit, get a little more flexible to, you know, if we're going to make her long term, I think down the road. Young lady's heifer that comes next. Next. Good individual, just you know, kind of comparing her to the ones that stand above her. Got to have more of her. Got to have more of this female, and just more dimension from one end to the other. And likewise, as we work our way down through these cattle, it really it gets down to more of an issue at the ground. I'm trying to get cattle that are sound enough, that'll that are flexible enough kind of in their pastern, square enough from their hawk to the ground. Females that just have a little more longevity to them is what we'd like to see. So good set of females. Congratulations to these exhibitors.
nice lineup here in our calf division of our Simbra show and really very competitive I thought all the way through uh, the heifer that wins class one is really a dynamic look uh, good bodied heifer that really gets out and covers her track well I think she's got an advantage as you get on top of the cattle in terms of having just a, a lot of rib shape a lot of power but yet still very feminine and very attractive in the way that she puts her parts and her pieces together love the silhouette of the black heifer now the second uh, class uh, one that's very attractive and very very uh, nice in terms of her lines a heifer that still moves well has some foot size and some bone work to her just very very high quality as you study her from the profile as well you know doesn't have maybe quite as much power as you get on top of her but still ample for a female i really like the look and the presence that heifer brings to the table Heifer the wins class three is a stout featured female. We talked about maybe not as flashy perhaps, but I like her substance. And then the heifer out of class four is really loose built. Won that class on structural integrity. Still a lot of quality in her. So really nice lineup. I'll get you a calf champion in a reserve. Let's give our uh, Simbra exhibitors a good round of applause here in division one. Really nice single entry July female on the Brown side, a heifer that really fresh in her appearance. It looks like she's got a lot of future to her. She's going to do a lot of things. She's extended up in that front end, lots of length of top and hip. Congratulations, this young lady. We'll look forward to this female coming back. That's over on our Simbra Show Your Champion. Heifer Calf comes from Cameron Skaggs from Brazos County 4-H. Your reserve champion Heifer Calf in our Simbra Show comes from Jacob Sampson from Brenham FFA. Some more results from our Simber show. Class 4 was led by Kenna Klecker from Goliad FFA. Followed by Haley Bryant from ARP FFA. Then Emily Minatria from Yo FFA. And Paisley Lightfoot from Fort Bend County 4-H. show we've got a nice single entry from Kayla Strack from Wharton County 4-H in class 9 in class 8 was led by Brant Barnes from Timpson FFA followed then by Colton Tomlinson from Brazoria County 4-H then Madison Rao from Carnes County 4-H and then Rylan Rao from Carnes County 4-H in fifth, we have Ellie Parks from Giddings FFI, FFA. Then Audrey Am Andrews from Anahuac FFA. Brant Barnes from Timpson FFA. Brody Kessler from Brazos County 4-H. Then Lena Rumke, Washington County 4-H. And Anthony Fortow from Wortham FFA.
real good effort to lead off this class, uh, one that's really sound and athletic. I think uh, almost picture perfect in the way that she travels uh, off both ends of her skeleton. And yet with that, a very, very progressive look as you study her from the profile, sets her neck up good at the top of her shoulder. She's really well balanced. She's really clean in her design, but yet this effort's got body and power. That's a very, very nice one that wins this class and does so pretty handily. Heifer in second, I think, just moves a little better than our heifer in third. She's a little better as she drops out of her elbow into her knee, a little truer as you take her to the ground from a flexibility perspective. Not in the same league as our class winner from the side in terms of balance and eye appeal, but I like the rib and the volume this heifer has. She's real broody in terms of her makeup. If this heifer moved a little differently, I think she's a comfortable second. I like her rib. I like the volume she's got. She's cowy. She's got a really nice uh, start there to her teeth. She's just a little coarse and open about her shoulder, a little plainer up and through her front end. We got to set her down a little differently off of her front end for me to get her up uh, around the heifer that goes second in the class. The red heifer is kind of a bruiser in terms of body and volume and mass. Like that about her. She's got some rib, has some capacity, just doesn't hook it up with quite as much look and eye appeal as those heifers that precede her in the class. And a kind of a, a nice baldy that's got a trendy look up through her front end. She's a little too one-dimensional in her body design. Gets up underneath of herself just a bit. Wants to fall out of proportion when we set the cattle in motion. But got some upper rib shape, got some pin width, has some stoutness to her. Final call, Simbra, class 10. Final call, Simbra, class 10. First call, Simbra, classes 13 and 14. First call, Simbra, classes 13 and 14. Another nice class of Brahmin females. A little more cow power, I think, up here in our class winner. Just got a tremendous uh, maternal look to her. Big ribbed, high volume female. Effort that's more than adequate. I think we're just talking about power and dimension. Just a female that I really think puts a lot of good things together. Probably the advantage she has over our heifer in second. She's a little longer strided, a little flexible, a little more flexible right at the hock. Female that sure wants to out and get around the ring and I, I just like that shape that dimension and rib that she has to her this is a really a stout made female this young lady brings neck she has got as much true natural width and dimension in her i think she's got a big hip in her big top in her you know and i think it's sometimes it's hard you get one that powerful to soften one up like you'd like for them to She's good. She is sure good from a standpoint of adding power and dimension. Maybe wants to restrict just a little bit when we get her out and flex, like to flex her up just a little bit, reach her out a little on a stride. But just a, a good female that I sure think brings a lot of good to the table. Another nice female that comes third, a heifer that's kind of a, a similar to our class winner from rib shape, similar to our class winner as a cow. I think she brings a lot of quality to it. She maybe didn't, sure doesn't want to balance up. She'll get a little more front end and chest in her and throws her out of balance a little bit. Not quite as, uh, not quite as much female there as what we have standing on the front end. Nice female comes next, this young man's heifer. If we could get her to walk a little better, get her down at the ground a little better, stand behind her and look at her from her hock to the ground, the way her feet hit the ground. If we could square her up and get a little better stride out of her, I think she's a female that could sure do a lot, of, do a lot more damage and get a little further up because there's a lot of quality there, good underline, good neck, good front end in her. Red heifer that uh, has really struggled all morning trying to get her to stop so we get a look at her, but the things you can really talk about that you do appreciate her is that rib and volume and cow power that she has. Young ladies have for the comes next. Same way. They're good young cows. This one probably doesn't balance again when we start talking about there's just a little more of a front one-third than we have in the back one-third, and it throws her out of balance and doesn't want to let her really square up like we'd like for her to. But good set of cow. Congratulations. That was class 10 in our Brahma show, led by Cameron Boatwright from Gonzales County 4-H, followed then by Haley Schoenvogel from Burton FFA, then Christina Smith Alvin FFA, Dylan Garza from Pasadena FFA, and Meredith Killen from Alvin FFA, then Emma Murray from Tidehaven FFA.
Fast nine was a nice single entry from Kayla's track in Wharton County 4-H. Interesting class to put together here on the Simbra side. I think the heifers uh, that we have in first and second, I'll be the first to admit we could alter both of them just a notch structurally. But the red heifer, when you get off to him from the side, props up with more balance and more eye appeal. Really a long-bodied heifer who's extended from the side. I think the shape of the top of her neck is a little better. Just uh, She's a little more shoved up in her chest as well. I think she just has a little more profile and eye appeal. I wish she'd just get out and cover the ground with a little more flexibility. Uh, but you know, we get to the black heifer in second who's gotten a lot of rib, a lot of volume to her, but she too is a little short in her rear leg construction. She doesn't prop up with as much symmetry as our heifer that wins the class. That makes it tough. Uh, I think they're both good cattle. I just wish we could alter both of them structurally, as is the red heifer is going to get the nod because she's a little more attractive uh, over this black heifer in second. The baldy heifer is the soundest of the top three, and, and you want to tell me that, I wouldn't argue with you. She's the best in her hind leg construction. She's good off of her front end from a movement perspective. She's just a little plainer and a little chunkier in her makeup. I didn't read her having quite as extension, so I think you either have to start with this heifer or land her in third. To me, she just didn't have quite enough eye appeal and enough balance to get around those two cattle that win the class. The red heifer that closes is one that's still pretty fresh from a composition perspective. She's pretty athletic as she goes as well. I probably just needs uh, maybe a little more bulk and mass and dimension to compete at this stage of the game uh, with those other heifers in the group. Really nice lineup to pick our division champions out of on the Brahmin side. Good set of cattle. You know, these uh, cattle are just like we've talked about earlier. They're kind of the ones that come back with, I think, a little more to them, a little more dimension, a little more substance, and still try to find them as sound as we can at the ground. But a lot of quality, good set of young exhibitors. Give them a really nice hand, and we'll pick our champion in reserve. Congratulations. Got a July born heifer here and a single entry, a black heifer, really bold and powerful as you get up on top of her. Good in the upper shape of her rib design and yet still has some spread out of her hip. Wide in her pins and some burliness as you take her to the ground. I like this heifer in terms of her feature, her foot and her bone work. Like those things about her. You know, she could maybe be just a nickel more agile on the go, but again, with that extra mass and substance she brings to the table, I think we can tolerate a little of that. So nice single entry. We'll study her closer here in this division. Thank you, gentlemen. Over on our Brahmin show, your champion junior heifer comes from Brant Barnes in Timpson, FFA. Your reserve champion junior heifer comes from Cameron Boatwright in Gonzales County, 4-H. Some results from our Simber show. Class 7 was led by Miranda Skaggs from Brazos County 4-H. Then Hallie Hackett from Hooks FFA. Jody Kalinowski from Fort Bend County 4-H. Followed by Tony Martinez, Caldwell County 4-H. Then Tana Primrose, East Bernard FFA. Class 8 was led by Grant Hinckley from Lockhart FFA. Followed by Lucas Noonan, Fort Bend County 4-H. Georgia Maldonado from Cold Spring FFA. Then Phoenix Steele from Marlin FFA. Class 9 was a nice single entry from Jacob Santum from Brenham FFA.
We're going to leave these two heifers like they came in, and this heifer up in the front's going to win. Uh, she's a bit more flexible as you ask her to get out and go, a little looser built kind of a female. To me, just from a skeletal quality perspective, she's the one that's going to win the class. I like her looseness of build. I like her utility in the middle part of her body. She looks like a brood cow in terms of her feature, has some strength about her jawline and her head. She's the one that's going to lead off the class. The lighter red heifer is more extended from the profile. I like the extra stretch and length that she brings to the table. She is just a little up on her toes, a little more rigid in the way she travels off her front end. One that, though, you have to like in terms of the extra pounds and lengths, uh, length that she brings to the table. Just got to loosen her up in terms of her flexibility to get around that heifer that wins the class. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That was class 10 in our Simbra show, led by Trenton Stewart from Brenham FFA, followed by Colson Gluck from Columbus FFA. Another good division here in the Simbra show, and a lot of good in each one of these cattle as they get out here, but uh, to me, a pretty standout winner here out of class one. I think one that's just really good in her type and kind, really flexible at the ground. Just uh, one of them ones that's kind of hard to make. She's going to be our champion. Let's congratulate her. Second call, Brahman, class 15. Second call, Brahman, class 15. First call, Brahman, Cap Division Champion and Reserve. First call, Brahman, Cap Division Champion and Reserve. 
Here's where I think you could take a straw pull and maybe come up with some different ones uh, in this lineup because uh, you got a big bodied sound one back here that probably needs a little more look. You got a nice black heifer that's eye appealing, but is she's just quite sound enough. You got this red heifer that won a pair of cattle that I like, but both of them need to move a little better. And then our heifer that was second in that class did so because of structure. Uh, she's got some balance. You know, is she maybe quite as sharp uh, as uh, like our heifer that ends up being our champion? Probably not. But I think when you melt these down, uh, the one that suits me second best is our classmate. She's going to be our reserve in this division. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That's your champion junior heifer coming from Class 7 in Miranda Skaggs from Brazos County 4-H. Your reserve champion junior heifer also comes from Class 7 from Hallie Hackett in Hooks FFA. get into our last division of these Simbras here. And after the wins, I think, is dictated on structure. She's better composed than her rear leg uh, design, a heifer that's a bit more flexible. I like the look of this heifer when she stands. She's got some rib, has some flesh to her, and a female that still carries it well. I like the natural power that she brings to the table. Young lady's doing a good job of their heifer in second. Maybe a little tidier in her other design, even than our heifer that wins the class. Strong in her top line level in terms of her hooks to pins. Just doesn't get off of her rear skeleton quite as comfortably as what I would prefer. She gets a little stiffer in terms of movement. Just need to redesign her there on the move a notch. But a good look to that heifer that props up with some balance. Really powerful set of females over on the Brahmin side. And this top end, there's just a tremendous amount of dimension in these cattle. There's lots of length, the length of front ends, length of hip, length of dimension all the way through. These are cattle that show us a, just a lot, of, a lot of power and a lot of quality. And I think the pair of females up here on the front end that are pretty similar in kind. I think they're the, the females that uh, probably are reaching out there as far as we want to get when we start talking about cows in points and where we're going to be. But I think the, the quality that these cattle bring to us, it's hard to not uh, put these up on the front end. They're, 
Our class winner, the advantage I think we have uh, over the heifer that stands behind her is probably from her shoulder forward. I think she's a little better from her chest floor up. I think she's a female that love that extension of front end that she has in her, that feminine look that she brings to the ring. I think she's sure got a big enough hip in her and she's wide enough at their base. I think there's just enough quality in this female that she's pretty kind of finds her way to the front end and then that, you know, a heifer that's as close to her in kind as this young lady's heifer that comes second. Probably a little more just a little more front end in her, just a little more chest. And uh, from that standpoint, it doesn't uh, balance her up quite as nice. She's a big, powerfully constructed female, lots of bone, lots of substance, lots of dimension in this one, too. You know, we start looking at those two heifers and we look at the length of, uh, of body at, that these two top two females bring. You can really see it when we compare them to some of the heifers stand below them. Young man's heifer in third. This is the, you know, this is the power female in here. This is the biggest bone, biggest footed, really stout made one. It uh, just puts a lot of performance, a lot of things together. She gets a little jammed up, you know, I think from just comparing her to heifers on either side of her. A little shorter in her spine, a little shorter in her hip. Not as much length, but there is still, you got to give her some credit because there's more uh, true dimension and power in that one than we probably have in any of them in the ring. Red heifer the young lady has, really similar to those heifers stand up on the front end. Maybe not quite as attractive in the way she puts it together. She doesn't want to maybe hold her top together, hold her pins up, and it gets a little more round in the way we come at, she comes at us. But still, I think she's a female, very deserving getting up on the front end of a big class. And then we have a set of females through here that are just, these are good cattle. They're good, uh, good rib. They've got good dimension to them. They've got some width from one end to the other. We probably can get as critical on these cattle down at the ground as anywhere. If you really want to, you know, pick on them and, and figure out why maybe they're not any further up, it could probably start at the ground. There's a, they get a out in their shoulder from their knee down they'll round out a little bit on those front feet or they'll get a little narrow behind and so just a generalization of what we're looking at in these cattle it gets to be a lot more structure than it does anything so good set of cattle good exhibitors give them a nice hand congratulations Final. Get into some January, February's here in our Zimra show. I'm going to use the pair to lead off the class. Uh, really like the femininity and the refinement of this cow. She's really nice up through her front end. A good bodied female. It's got a, a lot of volume to her udder. You might want to balance it up a little bit, but her coupon at her side is a stout featured uh, little bull. He's just, a, I think, a week old and a uh, nice calf. He's got some substance to him. Uh, you know, this cow has obviously come to us here at her first lactation and just had a calf a week ago. So. Uh, she's doing a, a good job. He's doing a good job with her. It's a nice female, uh, one that's got some quality to her. I like the red heifer, too. She's got some density, has some substance as you take her to the ground, some foot size. Set her in motion. You like to just loosen her up on her hind leg for me. Uh, again, you know, I'd like to see her maybe, a, to me, a little further along in calf. You know, again, that's a management issue, so you decide where you want to be on that. I'd like to see her a little calvier maybe at this stage of the game, but I understand things happen. I'm not going to take that away from her. She gets a little snug in her fore rib, and I'd like to loosen her up from behind. The black heifer's got a little more performance, and she's captured just a bit more weight per day of age, perhaps, than her contemporaries in the class. A big-bodied heifer that's got an easy keep and look. I'd like to just loosen her up in her build, change the shape of her back foot here. But that's one that's got some cowiness and some softness to her. She's going to make a nice one when we get her into the replacement pen as well. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That was class 14 in our Simber show, led by Cannon Hill, East Bernard FFA. Then Paisley Lightfoot, Fort Bend County 4-H. Followed then by Aiden Smith, China Springs FFA. Class 13 in our uh, Simber show was led by Aiden Gluick from Columbus FFA. Followed then by Heidi Bryant from ARP FFA. We've got an announcement from the show office. 
To get your trailer releases, you must have it stamped at the show office at the conclusion of the breed. You will then be released at the conclusion of your breed. So you can get your trailer release stamp from the show office at the conclusion of your breed. Some other general reminders. Please make sure all exhibitors keep your registration paperwork on you at all times when you enter the arena. This is still a blow and go show. No product will be allowed in the hair of any heifer exhibiting today. Breed champions. Breed champions need to report to the vet area with a parent. Breed champions need to head straight to the vet area with a parent. And all breed champion bios, all breed champion bios, please bring them to the south side of the arena to the announcer's table. We've got class 13 results from our Brahmin show. It was led by Callan Moreland from Corio County 4-H. Then Maggie Stevenson, Anahuac FFA. Followed then by Gilberto Martinez, Pasadena FFA. Diana Kettler from Alvin FFA. In fifth, Gracelyn Welch from Franklin FFA. Then Blake Bryant from Alvin FFA. In seventh, Eli Parks getting FFA. Followed then by Riley Wilson, Pasadena Memorial FFA. Then Elizabeth Irving, Gonzalez County, 4-H. And then another entry by Elizabeth Irving from Gonzalez County, 4-H as well. Get into our last class of these Simbra heifers here, and uh, this red heifer that wins the class, red cow, I should say, is really a nice female. I really like the softness that she has in her rib. Uh, a heifer that's still good at the ground from a movement perspective. Got a big strap and bull calf at her side that looks like he's got some promise as we take him to the future as well. Second cow is one that's got a nice look to her from the side. She's a little emptier middle than our cow that wins this particular class. Uh, one that you certainly like, though, in terms of the body, uh, in terms of of her look. She needs a little more body, though, to compete with the cow that wins this group. Uh, the cow that comes in third has a little more softness of flank. I'd like to balance up her udder design just a little bit. Uh, obviously, she's doing a good job milking this calf. Looks like he's growing well. Our showman on our third place calf here about got him a little bath uh, from this one here behind, but he did a good job. That's a nice, uh, nice pair. Uh, just doesn't balance up quite as well as our top two. Then the red heifer to close the class, uh, one that's got some extension. Uh, she's one that Again, from a body perspective, I don't mind this heifer. She's got some utility as well. Not as far along in calf, maybe not quite shaken down as much udder. But uh, again, I don't take that away from her. That's another management issue. She's just a little heavier up and through her front end and doesn't balance quite as well as our top trio. But a good class here of Simbras.
Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That was class 15 in our Simber show, led by Micah Ellert, Columbus FFA, followed then by Peyton Moore, Robertson County 4-H. Then Lucas Noonan from Fort Bend County 4-H. And Wyatt King from Wilson County 4-H. Really interesting class, getting into some bigger, stouter, made females, heifers that are really starting to kind of reach their point to where we want to start seeing them look a little bit more like cows and down the road what we can expect out of them. But I think the heifer wins this class. She is kind of the power female in here. She's got some, just got some extra hip to her. She's probably got as much true width of top and dimension as we've had through the day. She's a female that, you know, just put so many good things together. Extremely long fronted. Her advantage maybe to the heifer staying in seconds, just that length of top, length of front end, point of her shoulder forward and point of her shoulder backward. I think you can just add some extra bit of length all the way through this female. It's not for young that the young man brings in seconds a lot like her from a power standpoint. They're both a little more expressively made cattle. They're a little uh, more dimension to these cattle they're probably not quite uh, you know the the heifer in seconds probably just don't we just don't have quite as much of her when we compare it to our class winner young lady's heifer that comes third you know biggest thing we'd like to change about her from her shoulder right behind her shoulder into that rib get her to transition a little better get her to just bolden out a little bit spring her up a little transition into her front end it back into her rear third and i think it'd help her quite a bit Heifer that comes next, actually starting to show us a little bit of her development. I think it helps her in her body shape. She gets a little more depth of rib. She didn't, she didn't maybe quite as good from her shoulder forward. She'll get out of balance a little bit, get a little more upright on her front end. A couple of nice pair of red heifers that come next. Uh, heifers that are standing still, you probably like them as well as any. Uh, when we start getting them out on the move, then we're going to be some things we'd like to change about them. But this red heifer that stands right in front of me, I think her advantage when we compare her to the ones behind her is a little more bone and substance, a little more body, just a lot of good in that heifer. Young man's red heifer that comes next gets a little more refined in her makeup when we compare her to some of them that stand above her. But this is just a really nice female, very maternal in her look, just like the female that follows next. They're cattle that have some rib shape and dimension. Young lady heifer that follows next, kind of an interesting one. She's really long, and I think, again, like some of these females, if we just right from their shoulder where they transition back into that rib, back into the flank, if we could just expand that out, tie them in a little better, I think they're females that would just show us a little more maternal look from that standpoint and follow up with a nice pair of these females that are, you know, bigger rib females that uh, maybe just aren't quite as sound down at the ground as we need them to be. Need them to be a little more functional if we're going to get them up there. So congratulations on a nice set of females.
get into our last division of these Simbra cattle here and uh, really a good division kind of a production type division if you will from the standpoint we got some females that have entered motherhood and some of them that look like they're getting close heifer that wins the first class we talked about her stoutness uh, I like her foot size her bone work and she won that class because of movement she's still pretty fresh from a composition standpoint a heifer that's starting to shake down with some udder uh, you could balance up her teeth like we talked about maybe just a little bit but certainly a good kind uh, the cow that wins class two did so on flexibility. I really like the usefulness and the utility that she brings to the table. A cow that's got some volume to her udder and a good, uh, nice calf at side. And the big red cow out of class three, a lot of volume, a lot of mass to this female. Very dimensional in terms of her kind. Got that big soft rib cage in her and still a big strap and bull calf. So uh, some good seconds as well. Another very good division. My preference in this group though is our cow out of the last class. She's going to be our division champion. Final call, ARB class one. Final call, ARB class one. First call, ARB class two. First call, ARB class two. bring in that cow that was second to her in class and one that got a great look to her from the side really dynamic in terms of her presence we talked about maybe just a little shallower body a little emptier middle might want to shorten up those teats just a little bit got a very promising prospect at her side though that i think has a lot of quality to the baby calf another good one here like we talked about in the middle division but the one that suits me second best comes out of class one she's going to be our reserve in this division And that's your senior heifer division in our Simber show. Your champion senior heifer comes from Micah Ellert and Columbus FFA. Your reserve champion senior heifer comes from Aiden Gluick from a Columbus FFA. good lineup of these Simbras as we get our three divisions and reserves back out here and I thought a very quality show and uh, all the way down the line I thought we had cattle that we could uh, build upon from a doability perspective uh, still very functional at the ground and then as you start stacking on extras I thought we found some uh, that were really really good this was a good horse race uh, in this particular breed but there was one horse that was just a little bit faster than the rest this is a very very good heifer I think one that's just dynamic from the terms of her makeup hard to make them this 
sleek and this bold and yet this sound and this good looking uh, with the kind of quality and presence that she has. A pretty dominant champion comes out of Division Two. She's going to be our champion. Congratulations. We drop in that second heifer that was actually in class with her in that division. Uh, well, she did so and elevated in amongst our contemporaries because of her soundness, her looseness of build. We got a beautiful red cow here that's got lots of rib, lots of volume. Uh, that's a nice pair of cattle out of that senior division. And we got a very nice pair of calves. I think the one that suits me second best, uh, just when you start talking about extra quality, I like this baby calf to be the reserve. Congratulations. And that's our Simbra show, where your grand champion Simbra Heifer comes from Miranda Skaggs from Brazos County 4-H. Your reserve grand champion Simbra Heifer also, or excuse me, comes from Cameron Skaggs, also from Brazos County 4-H. Over on our Brahmin side, uh, really a good class of cattle. Going to moderate up on the front end a little bit, which I think is a good thing. I think this is a female that puts a lot of good things together. I think she's, uh, you know, from a soundness standpoint, to be real honest with you, she's probably as wide a base, not outside of herself, but the f one of the few heifers that will come down and from her hip to her hock to her ground, she's going to stay true and kind of track wide and not want to in on us and get narrow at the ground so I think that's to her advantage I think you know she's just a female that has a lot of longevity to her I think she's really productive in her kind I think you can sure easily you can see the rib and the volume and the and the mass that the heifer brings and and just nice the way she's put together young man that comes second I, you know probably his big advantage and I'll just tell you guys right now you bring big females in here look like this and uh, you get one with an udder under them it's going to be to their advantage and you know she's not as powerfully constructed as the heifer that stands behind her but she is stout enough and she is good enough and she's good enough at the ground she's good in her underline she's sleek up in that front end and I love that udder that she's starting to show us so we know she's going to be in production soon just a really nice maternal type female this young man's heifer that comes next boy I mean it's easy to get drawn to her because of the power and the dimension and everything that she brings just that foot and bone and substance she gets a little just wants to shake a little bit on both ends when we get her to move she didn't want to square up and really sound as sound as I'd like for her to be she'll kind of break out and wobble a little bit but uh, you know I gotta appreciate one when you can put that much power into them and uh, you know just again we talk about if we could be, get her a little further along maternally I think we'd see a, a true advantage for her. and this female's just similar to her in kind not as much of her she's just uh, not quite as as powerful as that female that stands right above her you know she probably is uh, has an advantage from the standpoint that she holds herself together a little better than the heifers that stand right ahead of her but uh, this is a female again we get them to this point like to see them look a little more maternal in their kind as we work our way through this next set of females these are good cattle these are good useful functional cattle cattle that uh, are have some rib to them and have some dimension to them as we work back into those the gray heifer that we lead out end up with in the class female gets a, just a little tighter a little shellier made not quite as much female there when we compare to the ones standing above her but good set of cattle all the way through good exhibitors give a nice hand congratulations final call Thank you, Mr. Sankey. That was class 15 in our Brahmin show, led by Lily Boat from Kendall County 4-H. Followed then by Branham Whitworth, Russ County 4-H. Then Ryland Rao, Carnes County 4-H. Then Mark Tomlinson, Brazoria County 4-H. Followed then by Addison Sanders, Wharton County 4-H. Then Jamie Hahn, Katie FFA. Meredith Killen from Alvin FFA. And then Sydney Greer from Lake Creek FFA. 
We've got results from class 14. It was led by Brooke Wendura from Columbus FFA. Then William Tate Barnes from Timpson FFA. Followed then by Morgan Smith from Alvin FFA. Ethan Blanco from Hutto FFA. Then Avery Wright from Mount Calm FFA. Nice lineup of cattle to pick these division champions out of. Spend some time looking at them as we come through. We'll just roll through this division. But the one thing that I do appreciate about them is we've just got a tremendous amount of quality out here. A lot of good cattle, a lot of good exhibitors. Give these exhibitors a nice hand for bringing them out. We'll pick our champion in reserve. Congratulations. Over in our Brahmin show, your champion senior heifer comes from Kaylin Moreland from Corio County 4-H. Your reserve champion senior heifer comes from Maggie Stevenson from Anahuac FFA.
Nice way to start off our ARB show here in our final breed on my side today and a good set of these heifers up on the top end and a pair of smokes that come to the top I think are just a little looser built. Heifer that wins really has a good look to her up through her front end. Uh, very attractive in her makeup. I like the lines and the quality this heifer brings and she's just a little better right in behind her shoulder and the way she transitions there than our heifer that comes in second. Heifer in second's not maybe wanting to show herself off quite as well but as you melt her down I like the construction of her hind leg better in the way she goes to the surface. Not as stout featured as the cattle on either side of her, but still a useful kind of female there in the second spot. Heifer in third has really got a lot of things I like in terms of dimension and stoutness. Uh, she's a little plainer up front, but with that, I didn't think she moved off of her hind leg quite as nicely. She gets a little shallower in her heel, a little more tentative in the way that she grabs the ground. But uh, there's a lot to that heifer. I like the power and the substance that she's got. Just need to loosen her up a bit from behind. The baldy heifer is very attractive. She's really sleek in terms of her pattern, but a little more deficient in terms of bone and features. You take her to the ground a little smaller in her foot size as well. The next heifer probably has a little more to her in terms of body and, and substance. Uh, she gets a little plainer at the base of her neck, a little crestier at the top of her neck as well. We just like to make her a little prettier in relation to the heifer that goes right ahead of her. This little guy in the glasses is doing a real good job with this heifer. She's wanting to shove him around, but he hung right in there. Uh, that's a nice heifer in terms of body and rib and softness. She gets a little chunkier up and through her front end. Uh, she doesn't stay quite as coordinated when we set the cattle in motion. We get on down the line here is a nice made heifer that just needs a little more to her. Uh, the big stout heifer the young man's got that just needs to be a little prettier. Uh, the freeze branded heifer is one that's got some depth rib and flesh, a little plainer up front. You got a little emptier middle heifer here that's got some pattern and we run into a pair of heifers here at the end. Just a little deficient in terms of performance and mass, uh, but they're nice quality cattle from the side. Just need to see them a little bolder all the way through. Get to the end of the day on our Brahmin show, and just a good set of cattle been through the ring all morning. Had a lot of them, a lot of good ones. I like these that we have lined up out here. I think there's a lot of similarities to these cattle from just structure standpoint and the way they're put together and kind of the look they have and kind of the attractiveness that these females bring to the ring. Good set of young exhibitors have come through the ring today. Give them a nice hand. Congratulate them for being out here, and we'll pick our champion in reserve. Congratulations. Wrapping up our Brahmin show, we've got our champion, grand champion, Brahmin Heifer. Comes from the senior division, exhibited by Kellen Moreland from Corio County 4-H. Your reserve grand champion, Brahmin Heifer, comes from the Heifer Calf from Laney Siska in Sealy FFA. Reminder to all of our breed champions, all of our breed champions, Need to make your way straight to the vet area. Breed champions straight to the vet area and they must have a parent accompanying them.
The first class of the day in our ARB show was led by Landon Legenbau from ARP FFA. Followed then by Dawson Moran from Washington County 4-H. Then Colson Gluck from Columbus FFA. Then Caden Pilot from Columbus FFA. Followed then in fifth by Cade Witten Needville FFA. Then Brody Shoss from New Braunfels FFA. Get into our next class of these ARB heifers here, and one that wins the class, I think, does so with relative ease because of her boldness of body, her power, her spring of rib, and with that, she's one that gets out and covers her track with some flexibility. One that's got a cowy look about her, uh, one that's got some density as well. Just a useful heifer here to win the class. I think the close pairs in second and third. I thought this one outmoved our heifer in third. Uh, she's a little more refined in terms of her uh, facial features. She's a little better in the way she ties into her shoulder. She gets Gets out with just a little more agility uh, than our heifer that comes in third. Now the one in third is stouter, uh, bigger footed, heavier structured female. It's got a little more dimension. I thought she got just a little up on her toes, a little straight off the edge of her shoulder. You could swap that pair back and forth if you see fit. The tiger stripe heifer to close the class is the soundest of the bottom three. Uh, no doubt about it. She gets out. She moves well. She just doesn't have enough lead in her pencil to get around those three heifers that precede her in the class today. We've got some results from our ARB show. Class two was led by Chase Gluck from Columbus FFA. Followed then by Bethany Fasky from Washington County 4-H. Then Lillian Burnett from Vanendale FFA. Then Aradia Morrison from Burleson FFA. As we begin our Santa Gertrudis show over here on the east side of the arena, just a nice little reminder, all of our awards are sponsored by members of the Mid-Coast Santa Gertrudis Association.
As we dive into our next class of these ARB heifers here, a young lady's heifer that leads off the class. She's just the cowiest and the softest made heifer. Has the most flexibility off either end of her framework as well. I like the foot size, the bone work, and the density this heifer brings. Uh, yet with that, she's got some capacity and volume to her. One that's easy traveling. Uh, you know, maybe not quite as nice up front as our heifer in second, but a lot more to her in terms of midrib and flank. Heifer in second's really got a cocky look about her. Very attractive and nice up front, doesn't have as much center body, and she gets maybe just a little more rigid in her shoulder design, but a good look to this heifer, very, very attractive and pleasing from the side. Uh, big stout heifer to come in third, lots of power, lots of substance in this heifer, gets a little snappy on her ankles, I'd like to loosen her up from a structure standpoint, not quite as maternal in her design as what our top two cattle are. Heifer to come out next to the end, uh, one that has some length of body, some extension to her, a little choppier in terms of her movement. Movement, maybe a little plainer in terms of her look, but she's got just a little bit more to her than our heifer that closes. Heifer that closed the class, uh, I like the length of body. She's pretty loose build as well from a flexibility perspective. Just a little stringier in her body design. Needs a little more to her in terms of softness for me to get her up out of the end spot. But the young lady did a very nice job with this heifer. Over in our ARB show, class three was led by Tatum Robinson from Trenton FFA. Followed then by Chassie Nowicki from Burnham FFA. Then Cooper Bird, Norman G FFA. Then Lillian Faskey from Washington County 4-H. And Cherish Faskey also from Washington County 4-H.
Really nice class to sort of Santa Gertrude's show with. Just a really good set of calves all the way through. And, you know, it's uh, always difficult. You get this many young calves in the ring and you have this much age variation, there's always going to be places to, you know, find a young prospect that maybe isn't ready today, but it's going to be good down the road. And I think there's a lot of those in here. I think there's some of them can be standing down on this end that we get back to this point next year, they're going to be up on this end because I think there's just a lot of future in this class. But today for me, this this young man's here for the that came in the class first or came in ended up first when she first came in to me she just struck me for the extra amount of rib and body that she has in a really attractive package she's wide enough base has enough to her enough foot and bone just a really nice young cow prospect i think she and she's she's neat enough made she maybe isn't quite as long and extended neck as these next couple heifers but this heifer is so good fronted and she is so big rib for a young heifer calf and that's natural dimension i think i think that's a, just a female that's built like a young cow. Then we come with a pair of these are just super cool heifer calves. I think these are great prospects down the road. I think there's a lot of future. This heifer in second, even the heifer in third, I think when you look at the way they're built, kind of what they look like they could do is we'd let them go ahead and mature and soften up and build a little extra body in them and get them soggy made and deep like our class winner. It's going to be a pretty stout bunch up here on the front end. Young lady heifer that comes fourth, that's kind of the big power heifer the bunch in here. She's got a little more grow to her, a little more performance, weight per day of age. She has the bone and foot to go with it. I think she's just a pretty good female that you have to appreciate that about her. As we go to this young lady's heifer that comes next, probably when we compare to the heifers or above her, maybe flattens out a little bit, gets a little more narrow to pins, and doesn't want to really give us that dimension that we have in some of those on the top end, but just a nice one that I think as we can work down through them, there's a lot of future there. This one this young guy's got here, this one's kind of intriguing. I think this would, uh, you know, this will be one that if I had her at home and I'd be worried, you know, my concern would be, will she go ahead and get maternal enough? And if she does get maternal enough, then she's going to be really hard to beat. I think she's got so much good to her. I think there's just a lot of places you can appreciate this female. Today, we're probably going to ask her to get a little softer made if we're going to get her up on the front end. But a lot of future there, a lot of good cattle. We can work our way down through all these females and just, you know, find a place and we can pick at them. And, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time telling you what I don't like about them. I'm going to tell you what I do like. I think there's a tremendous future in here and work our way all the way around this. Young lady's got a heifer standing here about fourth from the bottom that is as green as any of them in here, but there's as much future in that heifer right there, I think, as we see in any of them. So my congratulations to these exhibitors. Great set of cattle. Uh, give them a nice hand for bringing them out. Congratulations. Get into this next class of these ARBs here and the black and white heifer that wins. I think is the nicest balanced heifer in terms of body and mid-rib and yet when she still moves with some comfort and some reach off both ends. A, a heifer that's got a lot of quality and a lot of presence to her. Just a little bolder in her rib cage and in her design than our yellow heifer that comes in second. This heifer's got a real long bodied look to her. I like her extension from the profile. She's one that when actually when they stand, I think you can warn a switch. It's when you set her in motion, she gets a little more tangled up and doesn't stay quite as flexible as our heifer that leads off the class. Probably just a little more tubular in her body shape as well. The red heifer to come in third is a sound made athletic effort. She gets a little off in her top line, a little off in her hip. I didn't see her having quite as much presence and attractiveness as our two cattle that precede her in the class today. A big stout heifer to come next, one that's really opened up. A lot of dimension to this heifer. Probably just a little rougher in terms of her balance. Uh, maybe just a little deficient in terms of the extension and the profile balance that we find in some of these other females. The red heifer to come out next. I like her athleticism. She's big footed. She's a female that moves well. She just doesn't uh, have stayed together quite as good in her shoulder, wants to get just a little more opened up all the way through. Then the black heifer to close the class, let's get up in her top line a bit. She's pretty sharp and attractive up front, just need to make her a little bulkier centered, give her a little more softness uh, back there in her rear pastern as well. Over in our ARB show, you just heard from Dr. Bloomberg. It was class four, was led by Maddie Johnson, Austin County 4-H. Followed then by Cooper Kaufelt, Whitney FFA. Followed then by Bryce Hardy from Kaufman County 4-H. 
Then Gabriella Fasky from Washington County 4-H. Then Cora Roland from Pflugerville FFA. And Jordan Dozier from Waller FFA. Over in our Santa Gertrudis show, our class one winning belt buckle, sponsored by Square Running M Cattle from Nacogdoches, Texas. And that buckle is taken home by Jace Carpenter from Van Zant County 4-H. Followed then by Chloe Gordon, Alvin FFA. Then Jace Carpenter from Van Zant County 4-H. Followed then by Kayla Goff, Brazoswood FFA. Then Ellie Hicks, Joshua FFA. Then six, Matthew Phillips from Washington County 4-H. Then Dakota Castaneda from Foster FFA. In eighth, Micah Mikulochek from Pasadena FFA. Followed by Ellie Hicks from Joshua FFA. Then Caitlin Kylers from a Waller FFA. Come to our first uh, calf champion here in the ARB show and a lot of variation in type and kind as you might expect. Uh, got a lot of different uh, combinations of breed types out here and uh, so I think you have to work through that and melt them down. Uh, Heifer the wins class one. I like her depth of body. I like the volume that she has and yet she's one of the couple of them that I think stays really nice when you set the cattle in motion. She gets just a little concave in her heart and that's where I would tweak on her maybe just a notch, a lower third there. But I like this heifer's balance. Her hip and hind legs good. She's one that's pretty up fronted as well. Heifer out of class two is a stout featured female with a lot of dimension to her. She probably of the four maybe doesn't get off and go quite as good off of her rear skeleton, but I like that heifer's density. I like her power. I like the mass that she brings. Heifer out of class three is a real deep bodied female. I think one again, one of the sounder ones we've got out here. I really like the way this heifer travels off of her rear leg. If you the, you could pick on her just a little bit up through her front end, uh, but still, I think one that's very functional, uh, a lot of doability to that particular female. Then a very sharp, attractive uh, black and white heifer out of class four. I like the look and the extension that that heifer brings to the table. She might want to get up underneath of herself just a little bit. I think it might throw her off just a notch, but still. 
still, that heifer's got a great pattern, a lot of balance, and a lot of eye appeal to her. One of the really nice ones in the terms of the way she's made up through her front end. So I think you can do some different things in this division, and I sure wouldn't argue with you, uh, just depending on where you want to set some parameters and give some perspective on the on the set of females. But the one that suits me best is the heifer out of class three. She's going to be our division champion. This class over on the Santa Gertrudis side, good set of cattle all the way through. The heifer that wins the class, so I think she's the female that from, uh, just from a combination point of view, she puts so many good things together. She's really neat made from her shoulder forward, carries back, rolls into a big rib, lots of flank, with some width and dimension, wide base, wide pin, and pretty good at the ground, which is, gets to be kind of an issue. Some heifers standing down there a little further that I really like, but they aren't sound enough, so we can't get them any further up. Young man effort that comes second. From her shoulder back, I think it'd be hard to really pick on this female. She's as good middled and good in the center section and carries out with, you know, some width of pin and what base width down at the ground. You know, she's not as attractive made as either heifer on either side of her, but she's good enough. And I think you got to give her a credit for being a, a nice cow prospect that's pretty sound. This female, this young lady brings in thirds, a heifer that I'm just really attracted to. Standing still, this heifer I love. I think there's so much good there to her. So many things about her you like. But when I watch her walk away from me and I watch her in motion and her down at the ground. She isn't squared up enough. She wants to kind of roll those feet, not be as sound as we'd like for her to be, just like to change her if we're going to get any further up. She's got to get better footed. A little more refined version of these heifers that comes in fourth. Heifer with not quite as much bone and substance as the one standing above her. Similar with this young man's heifer that comes next that wants to flatten out a little bit, narrow a little bit, not give us that width and dimension that we have. Heifer that is, follows in, young ladies, heifer with just a little more cow there, we'd get her a little further up. She'll, I think as she matures and we get her a little soggier made, I think you'll see that heifer do a lot more things. And we follow with a nice pair of these heifers. This young lady spot this one on the end. You're doing a great job. Just stick with her. The one thing I would say about her, I'd like to change her on her feet a little bit to change her at the ground, but good set of cattle all the way through. Congratulations. Give these exhibitors a nice hand. Thank you, Mr. Sankey. Over in our ARB heifer show, our champion heifer calf comes from Tatum Robinson in Trenton FFA. Your reserve champion heifer calf comes from Landon Legenbau from ARP FFA. Angel Alanis from Pasadena FFA. Then Jordan Trant, Iola FFA. In seventh, Shelby Keene, Carrizo Springs FFA. Then Arden Strait from Fairfield FFA. Just some friendly reminders in the barn. All exhibitors must have all their paperwork on them at all times when they are entering the show arena. All breed champions need to go straight to the vet area after selection. Breed champions to the vet area, you must have a parent accompanying you. And you can get your trailer release stamped at the conclusion of your breed, and that is when you will also be released.
Another good class of these ARB females. You want to peel these two around here. Uh, this baldy heifer, the star-headed heifer, wins the class. I really like the utility and the softness this heifer has. Got a cowy look about her and still pretty sharp uh, up through her front end. I think adequate in the way that she gets around the ring. Uh, you know, one that's good enough in terms of her stride and go ahead and win this class. Heifer that comes in second. It's a bull-bodied female. Probably just a little better in the way she scoots in terms of her movement. Not quite as sharp up through her front end. Once to get a little flatter there in her heart, but still a useful kind of a female there to go in the second spot. Uh, the tiger colored effort here to come in thirds, deep bodied. I like her volume really well. She just gets a little more cumbersome when we set the cattle in motion, a little straighter off the edge of her shoulder, a little more concise the way she travels off both ends. Got just a dab more chest in her as well. The yellow heifer to come out next is really athletic from a build perspective. She just runs out of features. You take her to the ground, a little frailer in her bone work, probably just gives up a little bit of presence from the profile as well. A little bigger outlined heifer to come next. It's really raw in terms of her bone work. I like her stoutness and her substance. Probably going to require a little more supplement to maintain when we get her into production. A little bigger and harder and just in terms of her makeup. But a little more sensibly sized cattle to come on the end of the class. This heifer's got a lot of rib and flank in her. A little chunkier in her makeup and a little rounder out of her hip. Then the heifer to close the class. Probably a little more eye appealing when she stands. Set her in motion. She wants to creep up in her top line, pull those rear legs underneath of her, just need to make her a notch more flexible for me. First call, ARB Class 13. First call, ARB Class 13. First call, Santa Gertrudis. First call, Santa Gertrudis, Class 8. First call, Santa Gertrudis, Class 8. Really nice set of females on our Santa Gertrude side. Heifer for the wins the class. I think that she's got a little extra zip to her. She's just one of those really uh, extended up through her front end, carries back into some big rib with a nice hip to go with it. You know, if we could get critical, we just want her just square up a little bit at her base when we get her out on the move. But that's kind of picking on her. That's just telling you, you know, none of them are perfect, and we're going to find something to pick on them about. That's kind of what we're going to talk about with her. But this is a pretty good one, I think, very deserving. Win in the class. So when it comes second from her shoulder back, I'm gonna, you know, just appreciate this cow that she is. She's a big ribbed, high volume, good in the underline, just a really nice cow prospect. Probably gets a little bit straight right at her shoulder, a little more front end in her than we'd like to see when we compare her to the heifers uh, standing above her to, and maybe compare her to the heifer behind her, but she is a really nice cow prospect, and I appreciate that about her. Female that comes third strictly does this on movement. She's just a kind of a free mover, easy stride, and takes a long step, has an advantage over some of these other heifers behind her, and I think she's a great prospect. I think she's not anywhere near where she could be at the end of the day, and I think we can get her there. You just add that extra rib to her and get her to bulk up, and I think you'll like this female as a big junior yearling. This is the big power, big bone, rugged mate individual, and along with all that extra power and everything, and she gets a little rough rough at her hocks already for a young heifer, you know, kind of got some things going on there and, you know, just worry that, uh, you know, how long term is that? But from the standpoint of you want to add bone and substance to one, she's going to do more than any of them and just a lot of quality there. Kind of an interesting female that comes next. Probably not anything just jumps out and grabs you about her. She can, you can look at her and think she's a little too refined and then you can look at her and think, yeah, but she's she's got enough to her. She She's good in her top line. She's good from her shoulder back. She gets a little straight up in her shoulder and doesn't want to really flex up like we'd like for her to, but I think it's a good female. It's got a lot of natural dimension to her from her shoulder back. Nice cow. Then we have a nice pair of these heifers, and I'll be real honest with you, it can kind of get right down to the ground. It's the reason they get broke out and, and probably put a little deeper than we'd like them to because they're just not – right now we need to get them a little square and a little sounder if we're going to get them out and up on the top end. But congratulations on a good set of females. Second call. Thank you, Mr. Sankey. We've got a really nice belt buckle for the Class 3 winner in our Santa Gertrudis show, and it's sponsored by Buena Vida Cattle Company from Kingsbury, Texas. 
Taking home that buckle is going to be Jackson Pirtle from Rust County 4-H. Followed then by Mabry Mikulogic from Pasadena FFA. Then we have Jordan Trant from Iola FFA. Followed then by Kaylin Torres, Friendswood FFA. In fifth, we have Anna Lila from Hill County 4-H. Then Jocelyn Delgado, Brazos County 4-H. And Ethan Mickelin from Grimes County 4-H. We use this red heifer to lead off this class, and I think she brings the most to the table from a rib and body perspective. Uh, she's really got a lot of doability to her. Still pretty flexible as you actually get out and go. Uh, you know, she's not the sleekest up front. She's starting to get just maybe a little more condition than what she needs, but she still handles it well from an athleticism uh, standpoint, gets out and covers her track well. Heifer in second is the next most refined and feminine. She gives up some bone and some foot size to the heifers on either side of her, but I think she's got just a little bit more presence from the side and that's what elevates her to the second spot in this class. Really these bottom four you could probably jumble around and uh, I wouldn't take a lot of issue with you depending on where you want to set your priority. This heifer's bigger bodied, got a little stouter look to her. She gets a little chunkier up and through the base of her neck, wants to pull her knees together and doesn't maybe get out quite as comfortably at the ground. A little bigger outlined heifer to come out next. Uh, I like the freshness she comes to us in. She just doesn't have enough drop to her flank, enough center body, wants to get a little rigid on her rear hock and pasture. Then that heifer that closed the class, big bodied, easy keeping look. Uh, you know, again, from a, just a replacement retention perspective, you don't mind that heifer. She's just quite a bit plainer than her contemporaries in this particular class. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That was class eight in our ARB show. Led by Ashlyn Dutcher, Brazoria County 4-H. Followed then by Tack Ferris, Taylor County 4-H. And we have Lillian Shiner from Norman G. FFA. And then Brooke Deasy from Belleville FFA. And Jalen Gilbert from Matagorda County 4-H. Got a single entry in this class of ARBs. I like the movement this heifer has. She's got a good set of running gears underneath of her. Still a pretty high-headed kind of a female that's feminine and has an attractive look. Not the stoutest one we've seen in this particular uh, grouping today, but I think that heifer is very useful in her type and kind. Going to make a good kind of a cow as you get her in production. Going to be easy to maintain and very sensible in terms of her endpoint frame size. So nice female. We'll see how she stacks up in this division. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That was a nice breakdown of a Class 9 single entry from Olivia Adams in Alvin FFA. Some more results from our ARB show. Class 7 was led by Kaylin Dozier from Waller County FFA. Followed then by Slade Sullivan from Brazoria County 4-H. Then we have Cash Morrison, Brazoria County 4-H. Then Sydney Bohawk from Victoria County 4-H. Then we have Madison Cook from Clear Springs FFA. Then Madison Moran from Washington County 4-H. And Laney Matchett from Van Vleck FFA. Another nice grouping on this side in the Santa Gertrudis ring. The female that wins a class, I think we these top three heifers, you can kind of 
talk to them and break them apart and find where you want to start with them. For me, it gets to be the combination of the three. And this heifer that wins a class, I think her advantage when we compare to the heifer standing behind her is the point of her shoulder forward. She's a little more extended, a little more feminine, attractive made. She's got enough length of neck, ties in neat into her shoulder. You know, as we work back into them, we compare our class winner to heifer standing in second. Our second place heifer shows us a little more body, a little more center portion of her body that I really appreciate just like to extend that front end, just like to change her from her shoulder, chest floor forward, lengthen her out. She's got plenty of dimension, plenty of hip to her. She's sure a big bodied, bulky made cow prospect. Young lady Sefer that comes third is really a long spine, long hip. She's got a tremendous amount of length and performance. We just give her a chance, and as we go along with this heifer, and we get her to soften up and get her to kind of drop that flank and give her a, a little more appearance of a real, add some body to her. I think she's a female that's going to be pretty attractive down the road. It's a big one. And we get into another nice pair of females, probably get a little more refined when we compare them to the ones above them. Not quite as much performance, not quite the same made and build when we start looking at underlines and different things, but good cattle still, still really good ones that have a lot of future. Congratulations to these exhibitors. Uh, got a nice set of cattle. Nice pair of heifers here in this class. Uh, the heifer that leads off, I think, is a little truer off of her front end. Uh, me sets down and plants a little square, and yet this one's really got a nice, fresh look about her, one that's got some doability. Looks like she's going to be a mom here before too long, the way that udder's starting to shake down on her. This one's got a lot of presence from the side, a lot of useful things about her, and still fairly fresh from a condition standpoint. Heifer in seconds got a lot to her as you climb in behind the cattle, wide in her pin set, big down her top. I like the big foot and the big hind leg this heifer's got underneath of her. She rolls a little bit on her front feet, probably not quite as good in the angulation of her shoulder as the heifer we have that leads off, but big and stout and powerful, really robust in her design. That's a good pair of cattle here in this class. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. That was class 10 in our ARB show, led by Claire Horner, Taylor County 4-H. Followed in by Molly Hackstead from Needville FFA. Over on our Santa Gertrude show, we have a nice belt buckle for our class four winner, sponsored by Excel Santa Gertrude from Houston, Texas. And that one's going to get taken home by Chesney Robinson from Ector FFA. Followed then by Lauren Hanna, Wise County 4-H. Then Cale Cornelius, Timpson FFA. Then Bryce Hardy from Kaufman County 4-H. And in fifth, Avery Haynes from Foster FFA. First call, ARB, Cap Division, Champion and Reserve. Second call, Senator Trudis, Class 9. Second call, Senator Trudis, Class 9. Nice set of cattle over on our Santa Gertrude side to pick our KF champions out of. Just a lot of good cattle. I mean, these are, I think, functional, useful, long-term individuals. Get a good start on them as calves and look forward to seeing them again as they come back down the road as these mature females. But give these exhibitors a nice hand. Congratulations. We've got a good class of them, a good set of them out here to pick our division out of. Uh, again, congratulations.
Over on our Santa Gertruda show, your champion heifer calf comes from Allie Kimbrough from Shelby County 4-H. Nice lineup here in our second division of ARBs. And again, just like in the calves, some differences uh, uh, from the standpoint of fundamentals of breeds and the composition of the cattle uh, from that perspective. But I like all four of these, uh, really all seven of them, very, very well. Uh, we're not going to run back through them again. Uh, there's a heifer that suits me quite well. This heifer out of the last class is going to be our division champion. champion and reserve. Second call, ARB, Cap Division champion and reserve. Final call, Senator Trudis, class nine. Final call, Senator Trudis, class nine. And first call, Senator Trudis, class ten. First call, Senator Trudis, class ten. I think it comes down to the heifer out of class one. Uh, she's in contention because of her look, her eye appeal. Uh, you might want to set her neck and pick it up a little bit. And then uh, she's one that as she goes, she's adequate in her movement. Uh, could maybe loosen her up just a pinch. And then the heifer that was second in that last class, really stout and dense like we talked about. Uh, one that's got a lot of power to her. Maybe rolled in a little on those front feet, but still I think a quality heifer. I think that's the decision it comes to because I like the red heifer. She's got a lot of body. She's just maybe a little plainer. Uh, we'd like want to just uh, free her up in terms of her composition a little bit. And then the heifer that was a single entry. I like the movement. Probably just need to make her a little denser to compete. So I think it comes down to the heifers on the end. I'm going to keep the classmates together though. I like this heifer second best. She's going to be our reserve in this division. Over on our ARB show, your champion junior heifer comes from Clara Horner from Taylor County 4-H. Your reserve champion junior heifer comes from Molly Hackstedt and Needville FFA. Some more results from our Senator Gertrude's Heifer Show. Your reserve champion Heifer Calf comes from Jackson Pirtle in Russ County 4-H. Attention in the barn. We're going to conduct our American drive 30 minutes after the conclusion of the final show on either end. So whichever side ends last, east or west, 30 minutes after that, we will have our American breed drive. Really interesting class. So we're in Santa Gertrude's side. And the female that wins the class, I mean, just easily dominates standing still. Just hard to find a hole in this female. There's a lot of things I like about her. I love that shape and dimension and extra power. 
Where she worries me a little bit is she'll pop just a little bit at her ankles when we get her on the move. I think is maybe as we keep her going, she will loosen up. But I'd just like to not see that happen. I'd like to see her just reach down and take that step. And as the longer we've been out here, she's got a little more flexible. That's good from that standpoint. It isn't enough to beat her in this class. It's just something we're going to have to watch as we come back. Female in second is a female I really like. Now, she's a little too refined when we compare her to maybe the heifer standing above her. You know, she's a little finer bone, a little smaller footed, not quite as much power, but she's put together right, pretty good on the move, just a female that you have to appreciate. She has uh, probably an advantage just from a phenotype standpoint when you compare to the heifers that stand below her. Kind of a big, rugged individual here. And, uh, and third, lots of extra rib, which is to her advantage when you compare to these heifers behind her. She's big bodied and bulky made. Female just, uh, you know, isn't quite as attractive made maybe is what we have standing above them. Another long neck, long spine kind of female. Heifer gets a little tighter in the way she's put together, but I think from a stoutness standpoint, she just kind of has to work her way up. Then we follow with a nice pair of these heifers that probably don't balance up as well as what we have standing on the front end. Females that want to get a little more front end or chest in them, want to break in their top and not be as sound as we'd like for them to be. Good set of cattle all the way through though. Give these exhibitors a good hand. Congratulations. Another very good class over here in the ARB show. Four quality uh, females that come out here. Uh, the black heifer that wins, I really like the boldness that she has. Uh, one that's really bold sprung and big bodied. I like the power, yet still pretty adequate in the way that she travels. I've uh, got a really nice udder laid in underneath of her, balanced and out at the corners like she needs to be. That's a quality heifer to win the class. So she beats a nice one in second. Uh, I like this black and white heifer too. Very refined, very ladylike up through her front end. One that's athletic. Uh, one that maybe not quite as stout featured as our class winner. Probably not quite as balanced in her udder design uh, either. But I like the look and the symmetry and the quality that heifer has. Nice heifer in third. One of the nice ones we've had in third in this breed all day long. Big, stout, rugged, made heifer. Got some performance to her. She just uh, kind of comes a little piecier to us today in relation to the top two. But that is a nice heifer that's got ribs. She's got body. She's got mass. And she still moves well. And then our lone pair in the class class here. Kyle's done a great job uh, getting herself cabbed up when she needs to. Got a really nice look to her from the side. Uh, it's probably a little detrimental in the sense that she needs maybe that calf in her to look soft enough to run uh, with the top three in this class as is. She's a little more tubular in her look, but that's a gorgeous udder for a first calf. You want much more you can ask a one to lay down, bring him to town and have a quality uh, entry. Just a pretty tough class here we had in this grouping uh, in the ARB show. Let's give him a nice hand. That's a nice set of females this group. Thank you, Dr. Bloomberg. Over in our ARB show, class 13 started with Barrett Merton from Washington County 4-H, followed then by Justice Epley, Calhoun County 4-H, then Avery Gluck from Columbus FFA. And then Sierra Brown from Divine FFA. In our Santa Gertrudis show, the winner of Class 8 was Madison Moran from Washington County 4-H. Madison has taken home a nice belt buckle sponsored by Liness Farms from Ben Wheeler, Texas. Second in that class was Shelby Keene from Carrizo Springs FFA, followed by Lana Wonderlick from Washington County 4-H. Then Ariana Campbell, Sweeney FFA. Followed then by Jocelyn Delgado, Brazos County 4-H. Then Nolan Wonderlick from Washington County 4-H. Nice set of females on our 
Senator Gertrude's son, the female that wins the class pretty easily, I think, works her way to the front. She, she's probably from a combination of structural soundness and, and uh, just the things that I'd like to see about her. She's long and neat neck, ties in good into her shoulder, carries back with plenty of, of rib shape and dimension. She's good at the ground, and I think she kind of just kind of finds her way to the top and uh, gets there fairly handily. And then we gotta, then we got to kind of work our way from there as we go down through this heifer in second. She's just pretty much there just on structural integrity. I think she's a little better footed, a little better to ground, better in her shoulders, wants to hold herself together some, uh, just a good individual. She gets a little upright, probably or a little deeper fronted, I'd say maybe a little more chest and neck in her. Doesn't want to let her balance up quite as well. She sure is stout and powerful as the young man Sefer that comes behind him. The Sefer in third is, again, we pick out these individuals that are big bone, big footed, power cows, and this is one of them, but along with it, I think she brings some of those issues, uh, a little more shoulder and not quite as sound and functional as we'd like for it to be. The young lady's heifer that comes next, a female that's really, you know, really extended, long fronted, attractive made. We're just giving up a little bit of extra rib shape and dimension when we compare to those cows that stand on top of her, but good set of them, good class all the way through, congratulations. Class 13, final call, Senator Trudis, class 13, first call, Senator Trudis, class 14, first call, Senator Trudis, class 14. There's some give and take in this class as our next set of these ARB females. And heifer that wins, I think, is you just start to weigh out positives, uh, puts the most together for me. She's really long-bodied. She's really nice up through her front end. Young lady does an excellent job uh, presenting this heifer. I'd be the first to admit we need to change the shape of her right front foot here. Uh, she's got a little uh, curled in there. But, you know, again, I think you got to use this heifer because she just puts the most good things together from the standpoint she moves a little better off her rear leg than our heifer that comes in second. This heifer is very powerful. She's very stout featured. like those things about her. She's just a little awkward in the way she wants to sit down on this right rear. Not sure if it's an injury or what. She's just uh, not feeling maybe or 100%, but that's a quality heifer. She's got a lot of things I like. She just uh, maybe not going quite good enough for me to get her up around the heifer that leads off. This heifer's got a typey look about her. She's very attractive. She just could fit inside these other two from a power perspective. Um, she's a good heifer though in terms of her look. I like her looseness of structure. Got to see more heifer there. And then the red heifer to close the class probably has captured a little more performance. Uh, she's the one that's just a little rougher as you study her from the profile. Maybe just a bit more deficient in terms of balance. Big bodied and cowy and still roomy middled. Like that about her. Uh, just a little plainer in her overall profile. Thank you Dr. Bloomberg. Important announcement. Raiden Cheatham. Raiden Cheatham, please make your way back to your stall. Nice trio of females in this class. Heifer that wins the class pretty easy, I think, finds her way up here to the top. Boy, you sure appreciate the utter development that she shows us. She's got a big bag under her. She's obviously far along. She's a female, just got a real nice cow look to her. She balances up so nice when we compare to the heifer standing behind her. Just kind of a hard one to get around in this class. Big bodied, powerful made female heifer that's probably, I guess looks like maybe got a little injury on that back foot. Kind of something that she's dealt with, but she's moving pretty decent today. She just gets a little out of balance. She just gets a little more chest and front end up in her. She just doesn't want to balance up, but she's got a big center section, big body in her. And that's her advantage, I think, when we compare to the young man's heifer that leads, follows out next. Just a, a really attractive made, long neck, kind of a clean made female, real fresh in her appearance. Just giving up too much total power and dimension when we compare to the heifer standing above her. But congratulations on a good set of females. Thank you, Mr. Sankey. That was Class 10, led by Aiden Choppa, Harris County 4-H. Hayden's taking a nice belt, taking home a nice belt buckle from Quebec Ranch from Bay City, Texas. Class nine in our Santa Gertrude show was read, led by Rihanna Villanueva from Brazoria County 4-H. 
Rihanna is taking home a nice buck buckle from Straight Ranches in Streetman, Texas. Nice duo here in what I believe is our final class of ARBs, and uh, I'm going to use the pale face cow to lead off the class. There's just a little more of her in terms of her body as you study her and her heart and her flank. Uh, just has a little more doability in my opinion. Got a nice calf at her side that looks like he's got some future to him. Cows that utters a little nicer balanced as well. Both the cows, maybe their teats could be uh, altered just a little bit, but it doesn't look like it's affected them in terms of getting big strapping calves. So I just see more of the cow we have that leads off the class. Nice look to the female in second. Very attractive up through her front end. A little more parallel in her lines uh, from her body perspective. She's a little off balance in her udder. Got a big strap and bull calf at side though that's got some quality to him. I really like the look. He looks like he's going to be a really useful kind of a prospect. Two very nice females. Just a little more of the cow we had that leads off the class. That was class 15 in our ARB show, as you heard from Dr. Bloomberg. It was led by Slade Sullivan from Brazoria County 4-H. Followed then by Landon Langenbaugh from ARP FFA. Class 14 in our ARB show was led by Madeline Gitlitz from Waller FFA, followed then by Caden Pickett, Liberty County 4-H, then Cayman Allen Huffman FFA, then Coit Clark from El Campo FFA. Really nice lineup to pick these division champions from. A lot of quality, a lot of good ones, you know, but the, I think the thing they all do show is they show that they're kind of young cow prospects. They're big bodied maternal types that look like they've sure got a lot of future. There's sound at the ground as we can get them coming out of their classes, and so I think they've got a lot of future. Give these young exhibitors a nice hand for bringing them out. Congratulations on a good set of females. That's in our Center Gertrudis Heifer Show. Your champion, Junior Heifer, comes from Riena Villanueva. Coming from Brazoria County, 4-H. Your reserve champion, Junior Heifer, comes from Aiden Chapa from Harris County, 4-H.
Get our class winners and our seconds back out here uh, for this final division of ARBs. And again, just like we've had all day long, I think really good cattle out here and uh, some subtleties between them, but uh, still to me one that kind of finds herself here in this division. That's this young man's black heifer out of class one. She'll be our champion in this division. Congratulations to him. And as you get to breaking these cattle down, uh, the classmate comes over and another good heifer in terms of look and eye appeal. We talked about maybe not quite as stout in her feature. We got a big bodied, easy keeping cow here that's certainly done her job getting into production. And then a heifer you certainly like on the standstill there out of the second class. Got a great look about her. We talked about needing to change maybe the shape of her front foot there just a little bit, but a quality heifer. And that young lady does a killer job on the stick. Uh, the heifer I like second best is the classmate, the black and white heifer. She'll be our reserve in this division. Pretty good cow to win this class. I think this is one that, you know what I appreciate about her well as anything is she handles her condition pretty well. She's pretty fresh, I think, coming in here. I can see she's starting to show us a little bit of udder development, but, you know, the center section of her body's big. She's high, kind of a big rib, kind of a bold sprung female, but still attractive maiden. Balance is up really good. I think when we compare to the two efforts standing behind her, she just kind of puts herself together in a little better package. Kind of a big, powerful female that does come second. I appreciate the fact that, you know, there's a lot to this cow. She's got a lot of dimension to her, lots of body in her also. She gets a little shorter up in her front end. She doesn't want to balance up. She'll get herself a little chesty, but still, I think she's one that sure deserves to be there. Young man's female that comes next, pretty fresh and appearing up in that front end structure. She gets a little more refined. We just don't have quite as much female there when we compare it to two cows going out ahead of her. But good set of females all the way through. Congratulations on a good class. Over in our ARB Heifer Show, your champion senior heifer comes from Barrett Merton in Washington County 4-H. Your reserve champion senior heifer comes from Justice Epley in Calhoun County 4-H. Over in class 13, the winner of that class got a really nice buckle sponsored by the Cromwell Company. And Dwayne Ellis from Waco, Texas. The winner of that one was Kaysen Pledger in Timpson FFA. Followed then by Savannah Melendez from Foster FFA. Then Dalton Johnson, Victoria County 4-H.
Looks like the west side of the arena is going to finish first. So at the conclusion of our Santa Gertruda show, 30 minutes after that is when we will begin our American Breed Drive. Just as a reminder to all of our breed champions, you must head straight back to the vet area. All breed champions must head straight back to the vet area as soon as they are selected. They also must have a parent accompany them back there. Once you have finished your breed champion bio, please bring it to the south end of the arena to the announcer's booth. We come to the conclusion of the show on my side. I think Chris isn't far behind, and uh, I really enjoyed judging the ARBs. Uh, you know, again, you never know what you're going to get because obviously some different foundational breeds. Uh, a couple years ago, I had the opportunity to work through the American side at Houston, and uh, uh, again, uh, there was an ARB in there that we made reserve supreme that day behind a very good beef master. So. I know I brought my judging team with me. They're sitting down here, and uh, they're taking it all in. And, uh, you know, again, you probably think somebody from Illinois doesn't know a whole lot about American cattle, but uh, I enjoy judging Americans. Uh, I think they're some of the really functional cattle, and I didn't have a lot of experience with them until I came to Texas as an undergraduate student uh, at A&M. But I really appreciate them. Uh, they're cattle that have a lot of doability, and especially in this uh, division. Uh, you know, you have some differences. I'm pleased with these as they come out here, though, that they look so similar. As we were going through the classes, we probably had as much variety as we've had all day, but it's been very, very good. If you would, let's give these exhibitors a good round of applause. I'll get you a champion in reserve here in the ARB show, but a very good lineup of females. Run through this class on the Santa Gertruda side, and we're going to go ahead and give the benefit on this class of this nice young cow that's got a good udder under. She's got a nice baby at side. She kind of jumped out here and got that spot where we needed her to be doing in production, and along with it, held that rib shape and body and just made a nice cow. So, kind of deserves, I think, to win this class. We'll follow with another nice pair of bred heifers. Really, uh, a lot of similarities in these two females. I think, from a structure standpoint, our heifer and second it's probably a little better in her shoulder, a little better right behind her shoulder, wants to expand out and hold herself together. A couple of nice uh, young females with good udder development. She's got a lot of future to them. Then we have a nice pair of these females. And I'll be real honest with you, I just, you know, I, I, as we work our way through them and we get into a class where we got a set of red cows, we get to that end where we'd just love to see this female a little further along down here. But congratulations, good set of females. And that wraps up our ARB Heifer Show. Your grand champion ARB Heifer comes from the senior division, shown by Barrett Merton from Washington County 4-H. Your reserve grand champion ARB Heifer comes from the junior division, exhibited by Claire Horner from Taylor County 4-H.
While we've got some time here on the Santa Gertrude Show, I'd like to send another shout out to our volunteers from Sam Houston State University and our Rodeo Austin Junior Heifer Committee. These are the people that were helping all of our exhibitors move in yesterday and that are help organizing the ring and awards today. So if you see any of these folks, please be sure to give them a big thank you. The National Junior Center Gertrudis Association would like to acknowledge their board of directors, starting with their president, Cale Cornelius from Timpson, Texas, their secretary, Madison Moran from Brenham, Texas, the at-large director, Avery Strait from Streetman, Texas, the District 1 director, Lauren Hanna from Decatur, Texas, and also the District 1 director, Luke Nielsen from Crum, Texas. Their national royalty, their national queen, and District 1 director is Madison Douglas from Celeste, Texas. And the national princess is Arden Strait from Streetman, Texas. Some results from our Santa Gertrude show. Class 14 was led by Catherine Portner from Corn City FFA. And you have Avery Strait from Fairfield FFA. And Arden Strait from Fairfield FFA. Followed then by Sarah Barber from Collin County 4-H. And Chloe Gordon from Alvin FFA. Catherine will get to take home the sponsored belt buckle from Class 14. Sponsored by Passion Farms in Luling, Texas. Pretty impressive to see a ring full of these young females with calves at side and give you a chance to kind of look at other development. And I guess from my standpoint, I'm more concerned about long term. I think we, I think they were all, they're more than adequate.
in milk production in all these females you know our front end set of females probably aren't quite as expansive bagged maybe as what we have in some of these that set at the back but i think for young cows i think they've sure got good milk production and i think you look at these calves and i know you know they're getting all the care they can get you can kind of tell the difference between one that's got a good mama and one that doesn't and i think we got a ring full of good mamas they're good cows out here they're females that are going to do a lot of good things Pair the wins a class, I think that's kind of the combination for me. And when we kind of put together a cow that's got some rib shape and some volume and still be attractive made, more than adequate, and I think in milk production and still have some soundness and structural integrity to them, it's pretty hard to not uh, pick on and take those kind. And then when they have a really nice heifer calf to go with them, it just kind of jumps out there and gives her an advantage. Heifer in second, this pair, I, you know, I look at that front quarter and I just kind of wonder a little bit just how much milk we've got there but I think we're you know you can kind of give them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt she's got a good calf at side so they're kind of close to the kind of pairs that are leading off the front end a lot of similarities in this cow calf pair is to our class winner both have a couple of real nice heifer calves at side then we start following into some cows big power cows that uh, maybe calves aren't quite just as far along maybe just give them a little more time I think the difference for me this young lady's pair that comes out third. I think we just got a female that's similar to our first and second place cows. They're a little more moderate made, a little easier doing kind of cows. Look like to me they've sure got a lot of them, got a lot of quality. Got a bigger framed higher growth cow that comes next. Good udder though. I think she's got a lot of future to her. Appreciate the fact that she is a bigger powered cow and she's got a nice bull calf at side. I think it'll be a good one this summer for these exhibitors to kind of keep a hold of. And then I honestly, as we work our way down through here, and I'm not going to really pick on any of these and say these females don't. Uh, are good uttered cows. I think they're, and I think it's critical. You look at a two-year-old, you want to think, you know, is she going to last eight or 10 or 12 years? Is that udder going to hold up? That's the main thing for me is can we get them far enough along to, out of their lifetime to make them productive. But good set of cows, nice set of exhibitors. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Sankey. That was class 15 in our Santa Gertrude show. Winner of that class is going to get to take home a nice buckle sponsored by Triple P Ranch from Trinity, Texas, and the Went Ranch's partners from Bay City, Texas. And that lucky person is Wade Gardner from Troop, Texas, followed in by Madison Douglas, Celeste FFA. Followed in by Kason Pledger, Timpson FFA. Then Lauren Hanna, Wise County 4-H. Followed in by Pat Higgins, Bell County 4-H. Then Ethan Michaelin from Grimes County 4-H. And Jasmine Martinez from Pasadena FFA.
get to our last division in our Santa Gertruda show. Good set of females. And, you know, we talk about them when they're young. Are they going to make cows? Well, the, uh, it's pretty easy to see when we get out here in this lineup where we're at. And then we've got good young cow prospects out here. Got a lot of nice uh, females. Look like they got a lot of future from a female that, you know, doesn't have to have a kid. Her side looks like she's got everything we'd ask her to do. These are just good cows, good exhibitors. Give them a nice hand. We'll pick our champions in reserve. Congratulations. Over in our Santa Gertrude show, your champion senior heifer comes from class 13, exhibited by Kaysen Pledger from Timpson FFA. Your reserve champion senior heifer comes from class 15, is from Wade Garner and Troop FFA. Just as a reminder, if you have any breed bios, breed champion bios that you're holding on to, I'm going to need them for the breed drive. I'm looking for my reserve bios for my Brahmin and Beefmaster. If you have any breed champion bios, you need to bring them to the south end of the arena. And that's your grand champion, Santa Gertrudis Heifer, coming from the senior heifer division. Exhibited by Kaysen Pledger and Timpson FFA. Your reserve grand champion, Sandra Gertrudis Heifer, also comes from the senior division and is exhibited by Wade Garner from Troop FFA.
It's 1.18 here at Rodeo Austin, so that means in about 30 minutes, we're going to get started with our American Breed Drive. About 30 minutes, we are going to move on to our American Breed Drive.
That's right, Rodeo Austin. You heard it from Dr. Anderson first. We're about to get started with our American Breed Drive. In about 15 minutes, 15 minutes, we're going to get started. 150 is when we're projected to start out.
It's 141 here at Rodeo Austin. That gives us about nine minutes, nine minutes before we start our American Breed Drive.
gonna win it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with our American Breed Drive. We're gonna start off with our champion beef master from Hannah Pace, who's 17 years old from Henderson, Texas. Showing with Henderson FFA. Hannah's plans are to attend Texas A&M, major in agribusiness and nutrition, and become a nutrition specialist. Hannah's favorite hobby includes showing livestock, livestock judging, and hanging out with her family and friends. Your reserve breed champion Beefmaster comes from Sarah Wells, who's 18 years old from Grapevine, Texas. It shows with Grapevine, Grapevine Colleyville FFA. Her future plans are to attend Texas Tech in the fall and study animal science. Her favorite hobby is baking lemon bars. Your breed champion Brahmin comes from Callan Marie Moreland. She's 17 years old and a senior from Gatesville, Texas and shows with Cattle Drive 4-H. Callan's plans will be attending Texas A&M University, majoring in allied health with a goal of becoming a neurological sonographer. Callan's favorite hobby including showing cattle and cheer. With our reserve breed champion, Brahmin, he comes from Lainey Siska, who's 12 years old from Sealy, Texas and Sealy FFA. Her future plans are to continue showing, become a cattle judge and a cattle breeder. Her favorite hobby right now is running long distance and showing cows. Your grand champion Brangus comes from Bram Christensen, who's 17 years old from Angleton, Texas, showing with Brazoria County 4-H. Bram's plans are to study business, and his favorite hobbies include showing a fitting cattle, playing golf, hunting and fishing. Our reserve champion Brangus comes from Caden Pickett, who's 17 years old from Liberty, Texas, and shows with Liberty County 4-H. Caden's future plans are to study engineering, and his favorite hobbies include showing cattle, hunting, fishing, and hanging out with his family and friends. Your champion Red Brangus comes from Kindley Kirk, who's 14 years old, Shown from Bremen, Texas, and shows with Robertson County 4-H. Her future plans are to become a Texas Youth Livestock Ambassador, to attend Texas A&M, and pursue a degree in nursing. Her favorite hobbies include showing heifers, livestock judging, and spending time with her family and friends. Your reserve champion, Red Brangus, comes from Presley Jacob, who's 11 years old, from Pattison, Texas, and shows with Royal FFA. Her future plans include attending Texas A&M University with plans to become a veterinarian and continue to raise cattle. <coughs> Presley's favorite hobbies include livestock judging, fishing, shopping, and raising livestock. Your breed champion, Senator Gertrudis, comes from Kaysen Pledger. Kaysen's 14 years old from Timpson, Texas, and shows with Timpson FFA. Kaysen's plans are to attend Texas State University and hopefully become a physicist. Her favorite hobbies? To make Oreo balls for Christmas. Your reserve breed champion, Senator Gertrudis, comes from Wade Gardner, who's 18 years old, from Jacksonville, Texas, and Troop FFA. Wade's plans are to attend medical school at Texas Tech University and eventually become a surgeon. Wade's favorite hobbies include showing cattle, hunting, golfing, and working out. Your breed champion, Simbra, comes from Miranda Skaggs, who's 18 years old from Bryan, Texas, and shows with Brazos County 4-H and St. Joseph 4-H Club. Her future plans are to attend Texas A&M University this fall as an animal science major, and then attend law school to become an agricultural lawyer. Her favorite hobbies include raising and exhibiting Simbra, Whoop, and Cow. It's the rules. What? We've got our reserve breed champion, Simbra, coming from Cameron Skaggs, who's 14 years old from Bryan, Texas, and it shows with St. Joseph 4-H Club and Brazos County 4-H. Cameron's plans are to attend college at Texas A&M, to pursue a degree in animal science, and then go to medical school to be a doctor. Her favorite hobbies include livestock judging, being with family and friends. 
We've got our champion ARB from Barrett Merton, who's 11 years old from Brenham, Texas, who shows with Washington County 4-H. Barrett's plans are to pursue a degree in electrical engineering at Texas A&M University, and his favorite plan or favorite hobbies include basketball, golf, football, and livestock judging. Your reserve champion ARB comes from Claire Horner. Claire is 10 years old from Tuscala, Tuscala, Texas, and shows with Taylor County 4-H. Claire's future plans are to attend Texas A&M and major in animal science and become a big animal vet. Her favorite hobbies include softball and showing cattle. And ladies and gentlemen, this is your American Breed Drive. Well, we've got some evaluating going on here. I'd like to take this time once again to thank our judges, Mr. Chris Sankey and Dr. Blake Bloomberg. Done a terrific job this week. We're really excited to see what they choose today. I'd also like to thank again our Rodeo Austin Junior Heifer Committee volunteers, as well as our professors and students from Sam Houston State. These are the folks that were helping all of our exhibitors move into the barn over the past week as well as help organize the ring. We get to the end of a couple of really good days, and it's been so much fun to be down here and have this opportunity to sort through the cattle the other day and then come back and see a great set of Americans. And, you know, my wife and I, we love coming south, and we love coming into Texas. Uh, this has been an area where in our lifetime we've got to spend a lot of time. We have a real passion to find good American bred cattle. Our, for us, it's Brangus cattle. That's kind of the part of the, of the industry that works up in our country good for us. But we can really appreciate these kind of cattle that are just so special and useful and functional and do so many good things. And I just I want to take a minute. I want to thank everybody that's involved on in getting us down here. I talked about it the other day, how fortunate you are to have Glenn Allen down here and 
how much it uh, changed the trajectory up in our country at the American Royal when he left to come back down here, that it uh, we were kind of missing him now and, and wish that he'd be back. But I know he's in a good spot, and you're blessed to have him here. It's a great place to be. I want to thank all everybody that helped us. Good set of these uh, young kids from Sam Houston that have been in the ring helping do this made this work really well. But, again, it's been an honor. It's been a real pleasure. This has been such a kind of a special thing for us to get to come down here and spend some time and enjoyed today as much as any. There's as many good cattle in the ring here as I think we'll see anywhere we go. So again, congratulations to the exhibitors, to the families, to the people that are involved pulling these cattle and getting them here. It's been a great lineup. We'll look forward to picking our champions. I want to echo a lot of the same sentiments of uh, Mr. Sankey. I thought we had a great group from Sam, and the volunteers have been extra good to get the cattle in and out of the ring. And, uh, you know, they did a good job pushing them around. And uh, the hospitality has been second to none. We got a little bit of a wind coming through here, but this, uh, the hospitality has been second to none. Uh, this is always great for me to come back. Uh, you know, I spent five years of my life here as an undergrad and then coaching at AM before I uh, moved on to do some other things. But Texas is a great place. It's always nice to come back and visit. A little more special for me this year, I got my uh, my judging team sitting up here as we're getting ready for our last contest, so they're going to be my complaint department, so if you got anything you want to say, go tell them, because they usually don't have any trouble telling me what they think. So, uh, But uh, this has been really, really good. It's uh, great for me to get to judge with Chris and Sherry. I talked about this uh, the other day to spend some time with them, really close family, friends of ours, and some uh, two people that I have a lot of respect for. So it's been a great event. Uh, we're not going to belabor the point. This has been an awesome Awesome show all day long. Let's give these kids a good round of applause. We'll get you a supreme. And your grand champion American heifer is a Simbra from Miranda Skaggs in Brazos County 4-H. <laughs> In your reserve champion American division is an ARB from Barrett Merton from Washington County 4-H. And that concludes our American Heifer Show. Thanks again to our judges, Dr. Bloomberg and Mr. Sankey for their time and expertise for today. Congratulations to all of our exhibitors and a big thank you to SHSU for their hard work and dedication throughout the day. We on behalf of the folks from Rodeo Austin hope you have safe travels home and we'll see you next year.